Shall we start? Yes, sir. Good morning. Uh, this uh, virtual hearing of the Committee on Health uh, and Demography is uh, hereby called to order. Before we start, uh, let me. Uh, pa mga senators, no? uh, today, uh, we have the following uh, bills uh, on our agenda Senate Bill uh, 1132, filed by uh, Senator Recto, requiring all public hospitals to prepare and implement. A hospital site development plan. Next, Senate Bill 1437 of Senator Rivilla and Senate Bill 1095 of Senator Lapid, strengthening the regulation of health uh, facilities. Next is Senate Bill 1471 filed by Senator Angara, amending the Mental Health Act. At this point, may we request the committee secretary to acknowledge the resource persons who are with us today, Ms. Uh, uh, Mr. Committee Secretary, kindly acknowledge the resource persons. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we would like to acknowledge the following uh, guests who are joining us in this virtual meeting from the Department of Health, Dr. Francisco Duque, the Secretary, uh, Dr. Lilibet David, Undersecretary, Undersecretary Maria Rosario Verheire, Attorney Nicolas Lutero, uh, Director Maria Teresa Vera, uh, Dr. Leonita Gorgolon, Dr. Maria Soledad Antonio and Dr. Rio Magpantay. With the RITM, we would like to recognize the following. Dr. Beatriz Kiambao, Dr. Risa Mahelali. Ah, sorry. Sorry. This is only one guest from RITM. This is from PhilHealth, sir. Dr. Risa Mahela Lee, Dr. Marvin Galvez, Dr. Adeline Messina, Dr. Merl Santillan, Ms. Merla Rose Reyes. And from the PWH, Director Aris Doroy, and Director Maria Visna Maño. From the Department of Budget and Management, we would like to recognize Director Jane Abelia. From the Philippine Hospital Association, would like, we would like to recognize Dr. Jaime Almora. From the Private Hospitals Association of the Philippines, Dr. Rustico Jimenez. From the League of Provinces of the Philippines, we would like to recognize Governor Presbytero Velasco. And from the League of Municipality, Municipalities of the Philippines, Mayor Luis Chabit Singson. From the Philippine Nurses Association, we would like to recognize Dr. Rosie De Leon. We would also like to recognize the guests from the Philippine Alliance of Patients Organization organizations, Dr. Gia Sison and Ms. Karen Villanueva. We would also like to recognize uh, from the Department of Labor and Employment, Dr. Maria Teresita Pocueco. From the Civil Service Commission, we would like to recognize Attorney Crunimar Antonio Escudero. From the GSIS, we would like to recognize the following. Attorney Giovanni Lin Rico Marin, Ikoi Marin. Attorney Lucio Yu, Attorney Jason Teng, and Mr. Geoffrey Jonathan Reyes. And Mr. Rodrigo H. Manuel. From the National Center for Mental Health, we would like to welcome Dr. Rolando Cortez. Roland Cortez. From the private sector or professional organizations, which is the social security system, 
It is represented by Attorney Joseph Desunia from the Philippine Hospital Association. Uh, we recognize Dr. Jaime Almora. Anaulit na siya. From the Private Hospitals Association of the Philippines, uh, Dr. Rustico Jimenez. From the Philippine Psychiatric Association, uh, Dr. Amadeo A. Alinea. From the UP College of Medicine, Dr. June Caridad Lopez. Uh, ito. Okay, na to. That's all, sir, for the moment. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Committee Secretary. Uh, uh, good after, good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Senator uh, uh, Christopher Lawrence Bongo. In behalf of the DOH, uh, we we are here, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, for as a uh, resource persons. Salamat, uh, Secretary Duterte. Uh, morning. The Philippines is an archipelagic uh, state, and we. We recognize that healthcare facilities should be accessible to all, regardless of their distance from the national capital region. We all acknowledge that the regulation of health facilities all throughout the country has been difficult for the government, and this remains to be a challenge that we need to address. During the COVID-19 pandemic, reports have surfaced that some hospitals allegedly refused patients to be admitted and provided emergency care. Marami rin pong uh, nag-report uh, sa akin. Uh, these uh, alleged uh, incidents are in clear violation of Republic Act 10932, which allows the transfer of a patient only after necessary emergency treatment and support have been administered to stabilize the patient. All complaints for violations of the law against health facilities shall be filed initially with the Health Facilities Oversight Board under the, the, under the Health Facilities Services Regulatory Bureau of the DOH. May batas tayo na naglalatag kung ano ang tamang proseso na dapat sundin ng mga hospital. And uh, sa pagkaalam ko po ngayon ay uh, meron na pong uh, inimbestigahan at uh, uh, kakasuhan ng uh, Department of uh, Justice uh, dito sa mga kasong uh, reported na hindi pagtanggap. Marami na po sa Kabanatuan, yan po sa Kaloocan, sa mga nakaraang uh, araw. Mandato ng Department of Health na siguro doon na bawa, bawa taong lumalapit sa mga ospital para mapagamot ay matulungan natin. Kung kinakailangan palakasin pa nga ang mandato ng Department of Health para bantayan ang mga hospital. Gagawin po natin to. Moreover, the Public Act 4226 or the Hospital Licensure Act was enacted on June 1965. From that time on, various types of health facilities which are not covered by the existing law have emerged. The proposed bills aim to strengthen the regulatory functions of the current bureau and be responsive to the regulation of new and emerging types of health facilities. Related to this, we will also tackle a measure requiring public hospitals to prepare a hospital site development plan for better land use and utilization of resources, address facility deficiency, and foresee the future infrastructure requirements of our public uh, hospitals. In this time of pandemic, we, sh we should also ensure that mental health is valued, promoted, and protected. Aside from physical health, yung mental health po, napaka-importante. Marami po ngayon nakakaranas po ng depression dahil sa kasalukuyang lagay natin, lalong-lalo na po yung mga OFWs na, na nalalayo sa kanilang mga pamilya. For many years, po nagtatrabaho sa abroad, napalayo na sila sa pamilya. Hanggang pagdating dito, nakinukulong pa po sila. Talagang nakaka-experience po ito ng uh, depression. Kawawang-kawawa, tinatawag na natin silang modern day heroes. Pero pagdating naman dito po, ay uh, nakukulong sila. 
at uh, hirap na hirap po ang kanilang uh, kalagayan. Marami pong nagre-report rin po sa, sa amin, humihingi ng uh, saklolo at gusto na po nila makapiling ang kanilang mga pamilya. So, ibig natin sabihin dito, napaka-importante po ang mental health ng bawat tao. They are concerned not only about their employment, but also how they can provide for their family sometimes ito po ang uh, leading to depression kaya nga po nananawagan ako na tanggapin po natin sila ng bukas kamay po tulungan po natin sila lalo lalo na po sa panahon na naghihirap sila wag po nating antayin po na marami pang nade-depress sa sitwasyon uh, Basta kung sumunod lang po sila dapat sa mga quarantine protocols para naman po safe pag-uwi nila sa kanilang mga probinsya o mga pamamahay uh, po. Tutulungan po sila ng uh, gobyerno at kailangan negative po sila sa test ng COVID-19. Uh, bukod sa OFWs, mabigat rin po ang epekto ng crisis na ito sa mental health ng ating mga kababayan. Ganun rin po sa mga frontliners na patuloy ang serbisyo para sa bayan sa panahon ng pandemya. We are not taking this matter lightly and I commend the author of this bill we will be discussing today for uh, putting uh, light to this uh, subject matter. Senate Bill 1471 of uh, Senator Angara seeks to amend the Mental Health Act or provide for compensation, benefits, or for special financial assistance in the event a worker sustains a disability wherein the performance of duty on or by reason of his or her position. The measures we will discuss will help bring appropriate and responsive health care to all Filipinos As a chair of the Committee on Health, I want to take this opportunity to emphasize the need to always prioritize health care. Kasama na dyan ang mga health facilities, laboratories, and health workers. Last year po, nagkaroon po ng nabawas ang proposed budget ng RI-10 laboratories from 198 million noong 2019. Nabawasan at naging 118 million po ang proposed budget nila sa 2020. Hindi naman po natin akalain na ganito po mangyayari. Magkakaroon tayo ng pandemya, buti na lang po. Siguro with the God's intervention, tayo pumayag as a sponsor po ng uh, dito sa Senado sa DOH budget, I push for the increase in RT RITM's proposed budget, we made the right decision and increased the budget of RITM to 223.7 million. Hindi po ang pumayag na bawasan. Last year, during the budget deliberations, we also pushed for the increase in the budget of human resources for health deployment program. From the proposed 2.4 billion, we were able to increase it to 9.9 billion paglaban po tayo sa budget deliberation to ensure that continued the employment of our health workers whose services are badly needed in poor, underserved, and far-flung areas. Hindi uh, natin akalain na ganito ang ating abutin ngayon. Paano na lang po kung walang pang sweldo din sa mga health workers uh, natin. Mas lalong kukulangin po. Dapat nga, suportahan pa natin sila ng mga beneficyo na dapat uh, that is due to them. Uh, all of these efforts were done without knowing what was about to hit uh, us this year. Let this be a clear reminder and lesson to all of us to always prioritize healthcare. We should always endeavor to protect the people from public health threats, protect and provide compensation and proper equipment to our health workers and improve our health facilities and our laboratories and ensure equitable access to quality and affordable health care. Um, okay, to start here first in our agenda, It's a Senate Bill 1132 filed by Senator Recto 
uh, requiring uh, all public hospitals to prepare and implement a hospital site development plan. Can we uh, please uh, hear the position of the Department of Health, uh, Secretary Duque, kindly? Uh, thank you very much. Maraming salamat po, uh, ginoong uh, Chairman. Uh, sa nga lang po ng DOH, kami po ay nagpapasalamat sa pagkakataon na binibigay ninyo sa amin uh, para makapagbigay ng amin na uh, uh, suporta sa mga mahalagang mga batas na inyo pong uh, inaasahan uh, maipasa. The uh, DOH uh, strongly supports the measure which aims to provide quality healthcare facilities that are well planned and well constructed. It is consistent with the objective of the Universal Healthcare Act to ensure equitable access to quality and affordable healthcare for all Filipinos. We also would like to note the importance of site development plans as a planning tool in controlling development, especially in hospital complex and within the city, municipality, or administrative region, wherein the hospital shall be located. The preparation of the site development plan entails the careful drafting of all existing physical elements that directly affect the flow and interrelationships of each of the spaces and their uses. Usually, site development plans must be prepared for new construction of hospitals to present the overall vision and design intent. However, in cases of existing hospitals uh, site development plans, are also prepared for sites that are already experiencing significant development pressures or some of the negative effects of uh, sporadic constructions. It is an effort to find solutions to manage the future growth and development within the hospital complex. Uh, with this, uh, we also would like to articulate the uh, official recommendations of the DOH with the permission of uh, our uh, chairman, for a more holistic health facility planning, the DOH recommends that the proposed hospital site development plan be required of each public hospital be expanded into a hospital development plan for alignment, which considers the following factors. A, health facility introduction, including historical background, mandate, primary and secondary catchment areas. B, external environment to include social demographic profile, health statistics, and epidemiological indices, patient flow, and referrals. C, internal environment, which includes scope of services, management system, human resources, financial information, procurement of supplies, projects, services, facility buildings and grounds, status of operations, performance scorecard. Proposed development options for the facility. The financial analysis of the proposed development options must also be a requirement and to add the key areas of investment. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the hospital development plan should be aligned as well with the Philippine Health Facility Development Plan of the DOH, which articulates the needed health facilities and required capital investments in the medium and long term to help achieve health system goals. It serves as a guide in investment decision and implementation strategies relevant to health facilities. Finally, Mr. Chairman, we recommend revising the Bureau of Health Facilities mentioned in Section 3 to instead Health Facility Development Bureau. This uh, concludes our uh, statement of support, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Secretary Duque. We, we recognize the presence of uh, Senator uh, Sani Angara. Thank you for uh, joining us. Do you have Thank any you. opening remarks? Thank uh, you and good Senator morning, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Po. Do you have any uh, opening remarks, Senator uh, Angara? Uh, opo, Mr. Chair, Mike Lee lang ho. Thank you for calendaring our bills. And uh, you're very hardworking this week. This is your second uh, committee hearing already. Uh, baka maubos yung bills nyo sa committee. Uh, yung bill ko po is <laughs> well done, Mr. Chair. Uh, we just filed a minor amendment to the Mental Health Act, which we passed a few years ago. It's to take into account the case of uh, the former military man, si Ragos, kasi 
I think he got he was shot as everyone knows and uh, I think he got into a tussle with some policemen because uh, he was not able to take his uh, monthly medication he suffered some war shock uh, serving in the military somewhere in Bicol I understand and uh, he was no longer able to perform his duties as a soldier and he was taking maintenance medicine worth uh, I think a thousand uh, pesos a month and uh, during the lockdown or quarantine he was no longer able to receive any assistance so we'd like to amend section 5 of the mental health law republic act 1136 uh, and to add a section which would entitle the service users to immediately receive compensation benefits and special assistance entitled to the service user under existing laws should he or she sustain temporary or permanent mental disability while in the performance of duty or by prison of his or her office or position. Yun lang po, Mr. Chairman, kasi para hindi na sana maulit yung mga ganong klaseng mga insidente kasi ang conclusion seems to be that uh, had he access to his medicines, perhaps the incident could have been prevented and he would have acted in a different manner. Salamat muli, Mr. Chairman, at magandang umaga po sa inyo at sa ating mga resource persons. Salamat po, Senator Angara. Uh, thank you. May we now hear the position of uh, from uh, DPWH, uh, Director Aris uh, Roy. Or uh, Director Maria Visna Manio from the DPWH. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to uh, relay our uh, our greetings to the good Senator, Senator uh, Sani Angara, in behalf of the Department of Health. Mr. Senator, good morning. Good morning. morning, po. From the DPWH, are you around? From uh, the mute yata yung DPWH. Maganda gumaga po, uh, Mr. Chairman. Narinig ba? Ah, ah, magandang umaga po. Okay. Uh, we are uh, supporting with this uh, proposal, with this act, and this will uh, uh, actually uh, improve the delivery of services in the future for our uh, for the delivery people who will be suffering for any eventuality, for any future uh, calamity or uh, uh, pandemic. So this is just a a uh, good uh, program or app that uh, we are supporting totally for this bill. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, sir. <laughs> May we now hear the position of LG representative, uh, uh, Governor, sir, Governor Velasco. Good morning, sir. Morning po, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Bongo, and also to uh, Senator Sani Angara and to all the officials from the national agencies. Uh, Mr. Chair, the legal provinces of the Philippines uh, fully support uh, Senate Bill 1132 on the uh, requisite site development plan. Uh, we would just like to request a coordination with the uh, local government unit where the uh, hospital is located or will be uh, constructed. And then uh, one concern, Mr. Chair, is uh, uh, the request of uh, the League of the Provinces that uh, uh, the lots on which uh, provincial and uh, district hospitals are located uh have uh have to be transferred already to the local government units uh where such hospitals are located because uh when the, these provincial hospitals uh uh were previously supervised by the department of health uh there are many lots which are still in the name of the government so uh so that uh the local government units will already have the ownership of these lots. It is requested that the transfer be uh, implemented so we can uh, continue uh, the uh, uh, improvement of the facilities of the provincial and other local hospitals. And then, uh, uh, 
uh, that is all, Mr. Chair. Uh, we fully support the the need to uh, submit uh, and prepare a site development plan for the uh, hospitals. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Sir Bernard Velasco. May we now hear uh, Mayor Chavit Singson of the League of Municipalities. Mayor Singson, morning. Chairman, uh, Senator Bongo, good morning. May we now hear your position, the ever supportive uh, mayor. Well, as far as the health uh, bills that were filed in Congress by Senator Sani and Dara, supportado po namin lahat. In fact, karamihan, uh, the uh, League of Police Parties uh, only always support. But as far as this bill is concerned, uh, when I was the governor, hirap po kami na mag-maintain mga hospitals. Sana kung may brown program, uh, may support na rin nakasama. Uh, yun lang po ang aking uh, concern dyan. Uh, kailangan may pundo para hindi hirap po ang provincial at nadadama na rin, nadadama na rin yung mga all the local officials. Salamat, uh, Mayor. May we now hear uh, Governor Daxcua of uh, ULAP. Thank Another thank uh, you. very supportive along with Governor uh, Velasco. Uh, Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chair. Salamat po. Uh, to all our honorable senators, uh, magandang umaga po at sa mga resource persons. Um, eh, we have two general uh, requests uh, for bills regarding uh, 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 empowerment of LGUs. We welcome them po and we thank you for thinking of the LGUs. Number one po, we support the statement of uh, Mayor Singson na sana po pag kami binababang mandato, sana po may kasama rin konting assistance at konting technical or financial or funding assistance. Malaking tulong po. And then, of course, sana kasama dun po yung capacity building kasi aminado naman po kami, eh, kailangan namin ng technical expertise o at least po yung mga tauhan ng mga local governments. Another request po kung mamalapati ng ating mga senador ay uh, kung pwede po ilagay doon sa inyong mga batas kung sakaling involved po talaga ang LGU doon sa inyong panukala ay to to include the ULAP as part of the um, uh, IRR formulation team uh, para po naman makapagbigay din, makapagambag ang ULAP sa paggagawa ng mga implementing rules and regulations po. Um, general po, the, uh, regarding the mental health uh, a bill of the Senator Angara. Um, uh, we fully support this program and uh, we we appreciate the good Senator for his initiative. Uh, regarding the hospital site development planning po, uh, uh, from Senator Recto, um, ang aming, uh, we have two recommendations. Number one, kung pwede pong may regular coordination and consultation among and between DOH retained hospitals and concerned LGUs to ensure po na naka-align yung mga hospital site development plans and um, para makabuo nga yung buong framework ng uh, interlocal health system uh, na naipasa po ninyo sa Universal Health Care Act. And pangalawa po, um, the mainstreaming or integration of the LGU hospital site development plan in the local development plan kasi meron po tayong mga local development plans Sana po uh, mapag-isipan ninyo na i-mandato na po na ma-mainstream na po yan na together with the local development plans kasama na po yung hospital development plans. And then patungkol naman po doon sa bills nila Senator Lapid at Senator Bong Rivilla, um, we have minor, very minor recommendations po. Um, we would like to propose the creation of a uh, streamlined process Possibly, kung papayagan nyo po, a one-stop shop and joint inspection mechanism involving relevant government agencies such as FDA, PhilHealth, uh, uh, EMB of the DNR, among others, 
to further simplify tsaka para maging mas madali po ang pagtatayo ng mga bagong hospital ng mga LGU po. And then another recommendation would be um, technical assistance of course by by DOH para mag, mabi, mapalakas po ang capacity ng mga LGU in partnership with the DILG, DPWH and other concerned agencies para ma-comply po namin yung regulations ng health facilities. Uh, giving priority kung maaari to those uh, LGUs with significant gaps in their health infrastructure, uh, yung mga nanggagaling sa low income classification na mga LGUs, at yung mga geographically isolated, yung mga nap na napakalayo mga LGUs kung pwede pong ma-prioritize sa capacity building po. And then lastly po, formalization of uh, coordination and collaboration mechanisms between the relevant government agencies and the concerned LGUs Kumbaga, kung mailagay nyo po yung formal or collaboration para maging uh, kumbaga, cast in stone na po yung protocols. So Mr. Chairman, hindi ko na po babasahin yung buong position paper. Baka <laughs> maubos ko po yung oras. Pero yun lang po ang mga highlights na aming mga recommendations. But there's assured uh, all the bills are meritorious and ULAP is, uh, is supportive of all these uh, measures from the Honorable Senators. Thank you po Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair, Senator Angara po. Senator Angara, go ahead. Uh, magpapasalamat lang po ako dun sa ating mga kaibigan sa LGU, sila Governor Presby, Governor Dax at Mayor Chabit dun sa suporta. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Salamat, uh, Senator Angara. Uh, there are no more questions. Uh, we shall uh, take note uh, the comments and the uh, recommendations in our uh, reports. Uh, let us now... Uh, uh, proceed to the next. Uh, we move now to discuss Senate Bill 1437 of Senator Rivilla and Senate Bill 1095 of Senator Lapid, strengthening the regulation of health facilities. Uh, may we hear from Secretary Duque for uh, the position of the DOH? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, certainly, the uh, DOH uh, interposes no objection on this bills on account of the following provisions. Number one, expansion of the administrative setup, including increases uh, in the staffing and mandate of the Health Facility Services and Regulatory Bureau to be renamed as the Bureau of Health Facilities and Services, or BHFS. Number two, strengthening of enforcement of regulatory policies by granting quasi-judicial powers to the proposed BHFS. Number three, ensuring funding support for national and regional operations of the BHFS through income retention and subsidy from current appropriations of the DOH. Number four, expansion of the scope of health facilities and services to be regulated by the BHFS to include standalone health facilities and other modes of health service provision. Number five, extension of the validity of the license to operate from one to three years. And six, increased staffing pattern relative to the number of health facilities and services to be regulated uh, in uh, compliance uh, with the uh, standard ratios. We recommend, Mr. Chairman, uh, the need to include health services among the areas to be regulated by the uh, BHFS as proposed. Therefore, the DOH recommends adding services to the title of the bills, as well as defining health services within the definition of terms. They may opt to use this definition. And may I please be allowed to read. Health services refer to services that may be preventive, diagnostic, therapeutic, rehabilitative, palliative, among others that are provided by non-health related establishments or entities, such as ambulance services and telehealth services. Number two, DOH also recommends including a provision on uh, monitoring and surveillance of health facilities, imposing upon facilities the duty to ensure the availability of pertinent documents and resources during each activities. It may read, the Bureau shall conduct monitoring of health facilities to ensure continued compliance 
with the rules and regulations in the licensure and operations of health facilities and shall do surveillance whenever necessary. Health facilities shall ensure that key staff, records, premises, and facilities are made available to the Bureau's authorized regulatory officers during the monitoring activity. Number three, with reference to the proposed BHFS quasi-judicial powers, the DOH recommends including after the specific grant power granted to preventively suspend the phrase and give appropriate sanction to allow the Bureau to impose a range of possible sanctions in the implementing rules and regulations. Number four, the DOH also recommends removal of the provision mandating the provision of number five, the DOH appreciates the intention of the bills to strengthen the health facilities and services regulation in the DOH regional offices. However, there is a need to prevent conflict of interest by insulating regional regulatory offices and maintaining the boundary of regulation and health service delivery. Under the current setup, Mr. Chairman, the Bureau does not have field offices and implementation of its policies is carried out by the regulatory licensing and enforcement division or RLETs of the Centers for Health Development or CHTs. RLETs are under the CHT directors and are assigned other non-regulatory functions, thus losing focus. Thus the DOH proposal is to have separate regional field offices directly under the Bureau. That concludes uh, our uh, position, Mr. Chairman. Thank you once again. Thank you, uh, Secretary Duque. I have some uh, questions. Uh, ano na pong uh, update po dun sa mga kaso ng mga hospital na tumatangki sa mga pasyente sa umpisa po nitong uh, pandemic na ito? Meron, na, uh, meron po bang reports na hanggang ngayon uh, tumatanggi pa rin saan ba pwede silang magsumbong and uh, how will this uh, measure help uh, DOAs monitor the compliance of hospitals to regulations especially on the regulation prohibiting them from refusing admission of uh, patients uh, kindly uh, answer secretary uh, uh, thank you, okay. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with your permission, may I please uh, invite in uh, Asek uh, Sharay Grande, the head of our uh, DOH Legal uh, Service Office. Uh, direct us, uh, Asek uh, Grande, please. Go ahead, As Asek Sharay. Asak Sharay, nakamute po kayo. Okay, sorry sir. Um, good morning Mr. Chair, good morning po sa lahat. Uh, para po sa mga complaints po na nare-receive po namin ngayon, ang latest po namin ay yung Bulataw case po, na ang update po namin ngayon noon ay mula po nung marinig po namin sa balita na siya po ay tinanggihan, gumawa po kami agad ng letter po sa mga hospitals asking them to explain and to inform to the body kung ano, bakit at paano yung rason nila, bakit po nila tinanggihan. Nagkaroon po kami ng fact-finding po, sir, um, kasama po ang aming Health Facilities Bureau, uh, at nakipag-ugnayan din po sila sa NBI. Sa kasalukuyan po, um, ang nagkaroon po kami ng meeting sa HFOB Board para i-discuss yung um, kaso na ito at kasalukuyan po na ginagawa pa po ang um, gathering of facts and at the same time po, uh, nakikipag-ugnayan din po kami sa complainant po, uh, Mr. Chair. Para sa mga complaint naman po, maaari lamang po itong i-forward po sa aming email address po sa oasmg at doh.gov.ph o kaya po, Kahit uh, pwede pong itawag po ito sa DOH sa hotline po namin, sir. Lahat po ay tinatanggap namin at tinaaksyonan po. Salamat, uh, Asa Sharif. Uh, speaking of uh, health facilities, uh, may we know of the health facilities with accredited uh, testing laboratory, how many are public and uh, private? 
which laboratory has the largest number of backlog in testing, and uh, how many are the backlogs, and what uh, is the cause of the delay. Ito naman pong uh, RITM, uh, does RITM need additional personnel to be able to fast track uh, testing? Kasi nakatutok po tayo ngayon, Secretary Duque, sa mga testing natin, parati po nakikita na uh, in-explain po ni Yusek uh, Verhere na uh, limbawa yung uh, bed capacity natin, ito po yung available, yung ventilator, ito yung available, so yung occupied, available, occupied, available. So ibig sabihin, ahead ang Department of Health natin, ang ating mga health facilities dahil uh, Marami pang mga available beds, available ventilator, available uh, health facilities as of now. Kaya nga, hindi uh, natin ma-afford na umabot tayo sa uh, second wave dahil baka hindi kakayanin ng healthcare system natin. Mas mabuti na yung uh, ahead tayo. Handa tayo parate at may available na mga uh, health facilities. How about the uh, testing uh, uh, capabilities natin? Are we ahead or nasa, may backlog pa po tayo ngayon? Because I heard na meron pong mga backlogs pa sa RITM. At uh, nabanggit nyo po na meron na tayong 34 uh, accredited laboratories all over the country. And uh, you are targeting... Uh, 20 to 30,000 na uh, testing uh, a day. So kahit na yun po ang target ninyo at uh, nag improve na po ang ating mga laboratories na dadagdagan, bakit po meron pang mga backlog sa RITM? Uh, kindly uh, answer po. Uh, maraming salamat po, uh, ginoong uh, chairman. Tama po kayo, meron po tayong uh, mga naitala na uh, 5,700 backlogs. But ito po, ay, uh, this was uh, early uh, this week, pero na mawasan na po ito sa 3,683. Uh, kung uh, mamarapatin niyo po, ay akin pong inaanyayahan si Yusek uh, Vergeri to uh, uh, expound uh, on uh, the uh, report on uh, backlog and the uh, progress that uh, has been made with regard to our uh, capacity building uh, for our testing laboratories for COVID-19. So as a USEC Bojari po, uh, Mr. Chairman, if we can invite her. Salamat po. Uh, USEC uh, Bojari, good morning. Yes, uh, good morning po, Mr. Chair, and uh, good morning po sa lahat. Uh, tayo po ay uh, meron na po ngayong total of 43 licensed laboratories. Uh, meron pong 34 dyan ay RT-PCR at siyam po ang gene expert laboratories. Dito po sa ating 43, meron po tayong 29 na public laboratories or uh, government-owned, uh, both uh, national and local. And also we have 14 private laboratories na kasama dito sa 43. Uh, as what uh, the Secretary has mentioned, uh, Noon pong pag-umpisa ng linggo na ito, we had a total of 5,000 plus na backlogs po uh, in our laboratories. Uh, we met with them and we have uh, given them a timeline to reduce all of these backlogs through different strategies. And uh, as of yesterday, uh, they have uh, reported uh, 3,683 backlogs. As to the causes of backlogs po, uh, number one na po yung uh, ating uh, mga laboratory supply shortage, which we all know that uh, there are challenges for us in sourcing out our supply, especially uh, from the international uh, manufacturers. The second would be these unforeseen events that has affected our laboratories. Uh, like, for example, sir, uh, the Bicol Regional Laboratory and also UPNIH, has stopped their operations uh, because of unforeseen events like nasira po yung exhaust system ng negative pressure ng UPNIH and also for Bicol Lab due to the typhoon, nasira din po yung kanilang uh, system doon for exhaust. Uh, also, Lang Center has stopped, uh, has scaled down operations for two weeks. Uh, nung Monday lang po sila nakabalik sa full potential uh, because of uh, 
numerous issues in their laboratory operations. So uh, for now, Paul, we have employed different strategies already so that we can uh, we can uh, address this kind of issues in their day-to-day -day operations. And primarily, we have already uh, partnered with the T3 or the private sector uh, task force uh, group, uh, which uh, provides us with uh, daily assistance in the sourcing out of all of these supplies that we need and also providing us with different strategies so that we can eventually ramp up our testing capacity, Mr. Che. Salamat, uh, Yusek, uh, Derek. Any additional uh, question? Yung sinasabi niyo pong uh, PCR uh, test, uh, ano ho bang diferensya nila dun sa gene expert at dito sa rapid test para maintindihan po ng publiko? At ano yung pinakamabilis? Kasi nung una, hindi pa tayo dumating dito sa pandemic. Diba yung mga testing natin ay pinapadala sa Australia to take weeks para makuha yung resulta and then habang papalapit na sabi nyo po sabi ng Department of Health meron na pong uh, mga testing uh, capabilities ang ating mga uh, facilities no? nauna sa RITM siguro dati mga isang linggo so ano bang pwedeng posible pinakamabilis na makukuha kagad yung uh, resulta? Kasi pag nagpa-test ka ngayon at uh, hindi naman natin hindi, hindi hindi pa nakukuha yung resulta na assuming na negative ka pa tapos marami kang na makalubilo. So ano bang pinakamabilis may, may may nagsasabi na kaya raw po in a, in a day or two days na po sa kapasidad natin sa ngayon ano yung pinakamabilis na testing ano? Uh, capability natin. Uh, uh, Mr. To, uh, Chair. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, let me just answer uh, briefly and then to complement, uh, to be complemented by USEC uh, Bergeri. Yung pong uh, dalawang sistema po natin sa pagtukoy ng COVID-19 virus as ay ang um, RT-PCR, uh, ito po yung dati ng sistema at meron din po tayong gene expert. The gene expert uh, technology is uh, probably about two to three years old at marami po tayong ganitong makina, mga 400 plus, uh, distributed uh, all over the country. Ginagamit po natin ito for diagnosing uh, tuberculosis. Pero ngayon po, meron palang uh, uh, COVID-19 cartridges na pwedeng gamitin ang uh, gene expert machines. Kaya maganda po sana ito. Ito po yung tinatawag natin sana ng game changer uh, sa diagnosis uh, and screening ng COVID-19. Pero ginoong chairman, ikinalulungkot ko sabihin na ang supply ng uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, cartridges ay napaka-limitado. At ang mga gumagawa po nito, ang mga first world countries ay uh, nililimitahan po nila parang sa kani, kanilang mga sarili muna ang uh, pinaprioritize po nila. Kaya yung ating pong in order and uh, Yusek Caruset can, uh, can uh, 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 correct me, uh, yung 160,000 cartridges eh halos parang mga 25,000 ang, uh, ang dumating. So eh ang tagal na po nito kaya kulang na kulang po. Uh, Yusek uh, uh, Vergeri, please. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Go ahead uh, Yusek. Yes, sir. Uh, to supplement po kung ano po yung sinabi ni uh, Secretary Duque, uh, meron po tayong iba't ibang klase na test uh, for COVID. Uh, hindi lang po natin siya tinitignan sa bilis kung paano natin siya magagawa kung hindi kailangan din natin tignan kung ano po talaga ang purpose niya kung bakit po natin siya gagamitin. So first, ang pinakamabilis po pag tinignan natin are the rapid antibody test. Ang rapid antibody test po, in 15 to 20 minutes, makakapagbigay po sa inyo yan ang resulta. Pangalawa po, ang ating pong, uh, gene expert machine, makakapagbigay po sa atin yan ng 45 to 60 minutes. Pero apat na samples po ang ipoproduce niya. Sa, sa isang run po na 45 minutes. 
At ang RT-PCR test naman po, in 8 hours po, ang napoproduce niya 88 to 96 samples. So ito pong tatlong test na ito, makikita natin may mga pagkakaiba-iba para po sa haba ng oras na pinoproseso. Pero ang kanila pong mga purpose kung bakit po natin sila ginagamit. Ang atin pong rapid antibody test, ang lagi po natin sinasabi, hindi po natin siya ginagamit to screen or to detect the virus in a person. Ito po ay nagbibigay lang sa atin na kung may antibody na po o panglaban sa sakit ang isang tao. So hindi po siya pwede na stand alone para i-detect mo kung ang tao ay positibo o negatibo sa COVID. Ang ginagamit po natin, which is the gold standard, is RT-PCR kung saan nadidetect po talaga yung virus sa ating katawan uh, dito po sa RT-PCR. Pati po ang gene expert, ganun din po ang gamit niya, nadidetect din po sa katawan ang virus kung positibo o negatibo. Ngayon, kung pag-aanuhan uh, po natin, kahit na po ang gene expert ay naan dyan, meron na po tayong nine facilities uh, which had been licensed already. Tama po yung sinasabi ni Secretary Duque na nahihirapan po tayo dahil ang dating po sa atin ng cartridges for gene expert is just 6,000 per week at kailangan po natin i-distribute across all of these facilities that we are trying to license. Uh, hindi pa po tayo makapaghingi uh, na mas mataas dahil yan pa lang ang naikokomit sa atin ng, ng ating supplier para dito at yung katulong po natin is the PBSP which is the Philippine Business for Social Progress. Ang RT-PCR naman po may 34 labs po tayo uh, one machine can produce about 88 samples, although ang sinasabi nga ng ating mga eksperto sa laboratorio, hindi naman talaga 88 ang atin pong nailalagay sa isang makina sa bawat run, kung hindi mga 44 lang po dahil nga po dun sa mga prosesong ginagawa and preventing decontamination. But in any case, if you have two to three machines in one laboratory, you add them, uh, you add about 44 times three uh, for these three machines for one eight-hour run, and you'd have about 120 or 130 samples done in eight hours po for RT-PCR machine, Mr. Chair. Salamat, uh, Yusuf Guerrero. Anyway, yung sino pong magbabayad uh, nito, Yusuf, sa mga test? Uh, libre po ba ito sa, sa publiko? Uh, I'm sure yung sa mga pribado may, may bayad yun. Ano? Sino pong magbabayad kung sa pribado? Sino pong magbabayad sa mga public and uh, uh, hospitals na mga laboratory sa natin? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Seth, will I answer the question? Uh, I think uh, the PhilHealth might be the best uh, uh, in authority to answer the question. Uh, Mr. Chairman, pwede lang pong paki-anyaya uh, ang uh, PhilHealth para sagutin. Uh, Dr. Uh, Raiza Lee of uh, PhilHealth po, uh, kindly uh, answer. Dr. Ayan. Hello? Hello? Ma'am Raisa, go ahead. Good morning, Mr. Chen. Do you hear the question answer? I'm sorry, uh, we missed it. Ah, about my question. Kung sino pong magbabayad ng mga testing uh, being conducted sa mga... Yes, sir. ...pasyente, ano bang mga... Uh, Kriteria ninyo kung maging libre po ito sa publiko at sino po yung uh, kailangan magbayad uh, at uh, how much uh, it would uh, cost no? pag nagpapatest at magkano pong sinasagot ng uh, PhilHealth, magkano pong sinacharge sa inyo ng, uh, ng mga laboratories na inyong uh, pabayaran. At test yung mahal, anong test po yung mura at... Uh, Si, saan po sila pwedeng mag-avail po nito ng libre? Lalo-lalo na po yung mga mahirap natin sa babayan ng uh, gusto pong magpa-test. Salamat po. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for that question. Um, I would like to re request to direct the question to the Office of the Benefits and Development, Benefits Development and Research Department. 
department. Uh, they are represented by Dr. Marvin Galvez and Dr. Mel Santillan. Can, can we uh, request them to be recognized here? Thank you, Paul. Uh, Dr. Marvin Galvez, uh, Kylie. Yes, thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, sa nga lang po ng aming senior manager, si Dr. Mel Santillan, um, yung tungkol po sa tanong na kung sino ang pwedeng uh, magbiyayaan ng ating benefit packages, ito pa ay nakadesenyo para sa lahat po ng Pilipino na um, doon sa mga accredited na mga testing centers at um, kung po sila ay pasok doon sa guidelines ng DOH, wala po dapat out of pocket or no co-payment para sa Pilipino ang um, kanila pong may enjoy na benepisyo mula sa PhilHealth. Uh, uh, meron po tayong karapata, meron po tayong bibigay na packages doon sa mga uh, testing laboratories para makompensate sila doon sa mga serbisyo pong ito. At um, ito po ay depende doon sa kung ang kanilang test kits ay donated or kasama po ba doon sa kanilang operation yung uh, yung uh, pagpapatakbo uh, depende po doon sa ang benefit package na bibigyan natin sa mga laboratory ay nakadepende po doon kung yung sila po mismo nag-invest para doon sa RT-PCR pero po sa mula po sa perspektibo ng Pilipino wala po talaga dapat na i-out of pocket no co-payment pagka po nangailangan itong servisyong ito at pat, at pasok po siya doon sa guidelines ng DOH thank you po Salamat po, sir. Uh, one more question before we proceed. Ito, isa sa mga reklamo po, uh, Department of Health, ng mga private uh, hospitals ay yung uh, mabagal po raw na accreditation kasi gusto po nilang uh, magpa-accredit para sila na lang po mismo. Kung meron naman pong kapasidad na magbayad yung pasyente, ang uh, kanila po ay... Uh, accredit ka agad sila at makapag-cater ka agad sila sa mga pasyente ng iba't ibang uh, health uh, services. Uh, pakisagot lang po uh, Secretary Duque or Department of Health kung totoo po ba ito na matagal po yung mga accreditation at bakit po uh, na, na, natatagal ang accreditation. Not only speaking of uh, testing laboratory but uh, other uh, uh, services na pwede pong uh, ibigay ng uh, private hospitals, lalong-lalo na po sa panahong ito, uh, pwede uh, nang uh, ibigay po uh, sa, sa tao. Salamat po. Salamat po, Ginoong Chairman. Uh, yung pong uh, proseso ng, uh, ng uh, accreditation uh, or licensing ng mga laboratories uh, and uh, specifically for COVID-19 uh, uh, detection. Uh, lima pong uh, hakbang ito. Yung stage 1, self-assessment and application. Stage 2, assessment uh, of uh, DOH, kasama po ang RITM. Yung pangatlo po, yung compliance nila doon po sa mga uh, uh, requirements. Number 4, yung proficiency testing. At number five, yung full-scale implementation, ito po yung uh, okay na po silang um, mag-test. Uh, uh, mag no? Meron na pong certificate um, ang uh, laboratorio. Pero para po sa kaalaman ninyo, yung stage four, dito po talaga malaki ang uh, nagiging uh, uh, antala. Dahil uh, test po ito eh. At hindi po sa unang pagkakataon nakukuha yung pag uh, 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 kuha ng proficiency testing ay eh, naipapasa. May mga iba po, tatlo, apat na beses po bumabagsak. Hindi naman po tayo pwedeng magluwag sa uh, pangangailangan ng proficiency testing. Dahil po, unang-una, ang virus na pinagahawakan po dito ay mga buhay. Kaya kapag ka ito po ay nagkamali, ay uh, posibleng pagmula ng epidemia doon po sa mga laboratorio. Kaya pinaghihigpitan po natin na itong proficiency testing talagang maipasa nila. Dahil dito po nasasakupan nito yung safety, uh, security uh, nung proseso ng pag-test. Uh, Kanya po may mga 
lo, may mga private laboratories na nagagalit o nagsasabi, nagsusumbong po siguro sa inyo na pagkatagal-tagal daw bago sila ma-certify. Pero sa totoo lang po, yung uh, proficiency testing, we cannot compromise, uh, Mr. Chairman. Maraming salamat. Salamat, Tas. Okay. May we now po sa uh, source person. Uh, from D DBM, uh, Ms. Jaina Abelia, do you have any comment? Hi. Good morning, sir. Um, uh, may, may, we, uh, may we allow, sir, or recognize our colleague from the Office of the Organization Position Classification Composition Bureau to discuss about the organizational concern of the proposed uh, Senate Bill number 1437, sir. Okay, uh, Ma'am Abelia. Go ahead, Paul. My sir, Ms. Elis. Elisa Rivera to speak about the organizational concern in the said proposed Senate bill, sir. Okay, we may we recognize Ms. Abelia. Rivera? Ms. Rivera? Rivera, sir. Yes, Elisa Rivera, sir. Good morning, Rivera. Okay, good morning, morning po, Chair. Morning. morning. Good morning, po. Good morning, ma'am. Go ahead, po. Um, sir, actually, the renaming of the health facilities we have no objection or we interpose no objection on the remaining of the health facilities so the bureau of health facility service however um on establishing regular regulatory units at the regional level i think um we are constrained to, to recommend the same considering that um the the functions are already being performed by the eoh um regional offices um, specifically, the regulation, licensing, and enforcement, the vision in each DOH regional office handles the conduct of uh, inspection and issuance of permit to construct, license to operate, certificate of accreditation of, for health facilities, and clearance to operate for health maintenance organizations. Uh, maybe we could just strengthen along the regional offices so they would... Uh, assist in handling the conduct of inspection and licensing of uh, health facilities. That's all, sir. Thank you, sir. sir salamat, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am Rivera. Uh, may we now uh, hear the position of uh, uh, from DPWH po. Hello, uh, sir. Hello, sir. Senator Go. Um, morning, ma'am. Yeah, this is Jane Abella again, sir. May I be allowed to present our position regarding the uh, retention of income under Section 4 of the proposed bill. Go ahead po, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Uh, with regards to income retention, Section 4 of the general provisions of the 2020 General Appropriations Act provides that as a general rule, all fees, charges, and assessments of other receipts and revenues collected by the departments, bureau, offices of the national government, including constitutional offices enjoying fiscal autonomy in the exercise of their mandated functions, may be approved by the appropriate approving authority, shall be deposited to the national treasury as income of the general fund, pursuant to Section 44, Chapter 5, Book 6 of EO 292, Series of 1987 and Section 65 of PD Number 1445. If the Bureau opts to retain and utilize 100% of the income generated from various fees and charges without remitting the same to BTR, the current appropriations of the DOH under the GAA appropriated for this Bureau should be considered to avoid overlapping of funding provisions, sir. So, uh, ang ano lang, sir, is baka we need to review and analyze the income projection that will be made to ascertain whether DOH will retain and use their income or to continue to fully depend on the GAA subsidy, sir. That's all, sir. Thank you, sir. Salamat, uh, ma'am. Uh, may we now proceed to uh, sir, Ms. Uh, Dr. Ariza Lee of PhilHealth. Do you have any comment regarding this uh, bill?
Mr. Riza Lee. Dr. Lee. May we now move on to uh, uh, DPWH po, kay uh, Director uh, Duroy or Manyo. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Good morning sir. Okay, uh, so far uh, we have no objection for this uh, proposed bill, but can I have some clar clarification, Mr. Chairman? Go ahead, uh, go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, with regards to section 3 point uh, 3 point D and section 10, the granting of authority of the, the Bureau to conduct review and approval of the design plans, if this is uh, consistent with the mandate of the OH, and if they have the capability to undertake such review process. May we ask the Department of Health for comments? Sorry, uh, Mr. Chairman, can I just medyo masamaho yung, uh, yung reception ko? Ano, ano po yung uh, comment po ni uh, engineer ng DPWH? Can you please repeat? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, Mr. Secretary, with regards to the granting of uh, authority for the Bureau to conduct review and approval of the design plans uh, if it is uh, within the consistent with the mandate of DOH and if the DOH have the, the present capability to do such undertaking. Uh, Maraming salamat po, uh, sir. Uh, tama po kayo, kinakailangan siguro yung uh, uh, capacity building, yung kanyang uh, technical expertise ay uh, Ma, uh, makamit muna niya bago niya gawin ito. At naniniwala po ako na kayo din po ang pupuntahan para po sa kanilang uh, uh, technical uh, capacity uh, building. At uh, kanya, um, tingin ko po naman ay uh, para din hindi kayo mahirapan na mayat maya kung may mga uh, ganito pong uh, mga uh, plano Eh, sa inyo pa pagagawa, eh, baka naman uh, lalo po kayong maantala sa inyo po mandato na gawin yung mga planong yan para sa mga ibang gusali uh, pero sa atin naman po ay uh, hihingi lamang kami ng inyong mga technical uh, assistance or uh, capacity building. Maraming uh, salamat, salamat Secretary Duque. May we now uh, hear the position of uh, the League of Provinces, uh, Governor Velasco. Governor Velasco, kindly. Okay, do you hear me, Mr. Chair? Go ahead, uh, Governor, yeah. sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, LPP fully supports uh, Senate bills 1095 and 1437 introduced by Senators Lapid and uh, Ramon Ribella Jr. respectively. Uh, we welcome the uh, uh, in, uh, expansion of the definition of a hospital and health service institution to include uh, mga testing, diagnostics, rehabilitation, mobile clinic, and other establishments. Uh, our concern, Mr. Chair, is uh, with respect to the licensing of uh, provincial hospitals. Uh, right now, uh, we have to be candid about this. Uh, uh, provincial hospitals in uh, provinces classified uh, as uh, third, fourth, and fifth uh, may have difficulty in uh, maintaining their classification even as uh, level one hospitals. And we have uh, difficulty in getting the required equipment and also the uh, personnel uh, in the uh, 
provincial hospitals, more particularly the doctors and nurses, no? So uh, it is uh, in this regard, Mr. Chair, that uh, we request the DOH to look into this uh, matter closely. Uh, you know, uh, yung mga pondo po nung mga provincial hospitals, yung sa provincial governments po, na mga mababa ang klasifikasyon, usually po ay hindi ganun kalaki. So, uh, meron pa pong mga ibang requirements na pinapataw yung uh, Bureau of Health Facilities and Services no, regarding the licensing. Uh, kaya po, uh, kailan tignan po ito, uh, we fully acknowledge the strong support of uh, Secretary Duque and uh, DOH on this matter. Uh, may mga hinihingi po kami mga requirements at uh, naibibigay naman po at uh, Tingin po namin ay mas ma ibang approach ang kailangan, lalo po yung pagkuhan ng mga doktor, nahihirapan po kami uh, just to maintain yung uh, uh, like uh, level 1 classification. Uh, sa amin po, sa Marinduque, yung isang level 1 hospital namin naging infirmary na lang. Kasi kaya nahihirapan po sa pagkuhan lang sa mga doktor. No? At saka, so uh, we welcome yung mga initiatives ni Secretary Duque and the DOH uh, with respect to uh, uh, getting uh, the doctors required of these hospitals. But uh, talaga mahirap kung kumuha ng mga doktor ho ngayon. Uh, we have uh, been looking into yung mga innovative approaches, mga telemedicine, ganun po. At uh, we now uh, agree to uh, concession agreements, uh, consignment agreements. Uh, regarding yung sa mga requirements lang sa concession and the uh, consignment agreements, medyo luwagan lang ho po yung mga requirements. Minsan ho, maraming mga requirements na naipapataw. So it is when this, uh, we are raising this concern, especially with the uh, lower classified uh, provincial governments na medyo manahihirapan po just to comply with the minimum requirements prescribed by DOH. Baka for this uh, lower classified uh, provincial governments, uh, there may be a different uh, 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 re there may be different requirements uh, that uh, that can be uh, uh, required from them. Yun lang po, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's a serious concern kasi pag bumaba po yung level 1, naging infirmary, hindi na po pwedeng mag-opera at mag -opera mag-render mga medical services. Thank you po, Mr. Chair. And uh, we fully support, again, the Senate Bill of Senator Lapid and uh, uh, Senator Bong Rebilla. Salamat, uh, Mark. Nandiyan na po yung uh, taga PhilHealth, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Raiza Lee or Dr. Mar Marvin Galvez po ng PhilHealth. Uh, yeah, good morning po, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, please allow me to read the position paper uh, submitted by Dr. Riz Herrera of accreditation regarding um, the Senate Bill number 1095, if I may proceed. Go ahead, uh, sir. It, thank you, sir. An act strengthening the regulation of health facilities and services and appropriating funds thereof, therefore repealing for the purpose the Republic Act number 4226, otherwise known as the Hospital Licensure Act, and Senate Bill number 1437, an act modernizing the regulations of health facilities and services and appropriating funds, therefore repealing for the purpose Republic Act number 4226, otherwise known as the Hospital Licensure Act. Um, Philip's position is as follows. The corporation lauds and supports the noble intent of the bills. Philip agrees that the Hospital Licensure Act needs to be updated. Health facilities other than hospitals need to be regulated to ensure safety and quality among their clients. Regulating the health facilities does not equate to regulating the cost of health services being given by these facilities and the, unless the law gives additional power to the licensing bureau to influence this. To ensure that the bills focus on proving expanded, safe, and quali quality, including cost-effective services, may we recommend the following adjustments for your consideration. 
Number one, for the types of facilities to be covered by the bill to include temporary facilities or makeshift facilities. Just like in the current pandemic situation, there is a need to regulate community isolation units, which are temporary facilities, makeshift hospitals during calamities. For Section 8, to remove formal baccalaureate degree preferably and maintain a master's degree in a hospital's administration or related courses. The chief executive officer, chief operating officer, or administrative officer need to be a doctor. Number three, for Section 11, may we suggest that license is a prerequisite to participation in the NHIP instead of automatic participation in NHIP. Participation in NHIP will be subject to contracting per UHC law, which may be additional requirements other than license. It should be qualified that they should still comply with NHP rules. If this bill becomes law, DOH and PhilHealth should discuss the delineation of rules regarding licensing and accreditations. Um, number four, for Section 13, to add fraudulent acts against the National Health Insurance Program as another ground for suspension and revocation of license to further discourage social health insurance fraud. We submit, signed, Brigadier General Ricardo Morales, AFP retired. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Salamat Mr. Po Chairman. Po. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, go ahead. Lang kanina na, yes, thank you, sir. You lang na i, uh, na i uh, sagut ko po kanina. Tungkol doon sa komento ng DPWH, ako po ay uh, nasabihan ng akin director for Health Facility Services Regulatory Bureau na datapwat meron naman na silang kakayahan para magsagawa uh, ng mga plano for uh, construction, for renovation, for uh, expansion ay uh, maganda rin na uh, makatutulong ang uh, DPWH sa pagpapalawig ng uh, ganun pong kakayahan or expertise uh, bagkos na pina pinauunlad natin yung uh, yung uh, hospital uh, facilities natin na sasa ilalim po sa regulatory uh, mandate ng uh, uh, proposed uh, uh, bill no ng health facility uh, services bureau so meron na po tayong kakayahan para gawin yung mga yan yun nga lang konting tulong pa from uh, the DPWA salamat po Salamat, Secretary Duque. Sa PhilHealth po, no? uh, or sa DOH, uh, na, malaking tulong po ang uh, Red Cross ngayon no? para mapabilis ang ating uh, uh, kapasidad natin sa testing. Dahil uh, all over the country po, meron silang mga Red Cross at uh, nakakalat po ang kanilang mga testing laboratories. Uh, congratulations kay... Senator Gordon, chairman po ng Red Cross. Uh, ang tanong ko lang po sa Red Cross ba ang magbabayad ay uh, PhilHealth rin po ba? Uh, at uh, sila bang magsusolder po? At ano rin po ang uh, uh, criteria po para maka-avail sila ng uh, testing? Halimbawa, gusto nilang makuha kagad yung test, pupunta sila sa Red Cross. At ano bang dapat nilang uh, gawin? At uh, ano bang agreement between the PhilHealth and the Red Cross sa ngayon para po ma mapabilis yung uh, servisyo na mag will uh, com compensate uh, each other. Uh, Mr. Chairman, pwede ko bang uh, pakianyaya lang po si uh, Yusek uh, Vergeri para sagutin po yung inyong katanungan. Yusek uh, Vergeri, Yes, um, uh, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry. Um, ang Philippine Red Cross po ay katulong natin and sa katunayan po dun po sa mga datos natin ngayon, they comprise about 40% of uh, those being tested uh, sa kanila po na pupunta uh, nung sa OFWs po kasi ay nakikita sa kanila lahat. Uh, pangalawa, tumatanggap din po sila sa ating mga local government units at tumatanggap din po sila sa ating mga Metro Manila hospitals. Ang, ang patakaran po ng Philippine Red Cross, uh, sila po ay uh, kailangan po ma-encode na po ng ating mga hospital o kaya ng community o di kaya yung mga Philippine Coast Guard and BOQ ang mga uh, case investigation forms bago po mapadala sa kanila ang samples. 
ang kanila pong pinapa ang patakaran po nila sa pagbabayad ay PhilHealth po ang uh, nagbabayad po ng mga test na ito at meron po silang kasunduan with PhilHealth, Mr. Chair. Salamat po. Another, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman. Oh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just want for the record uh, to uh, commend uh, the uh, huge uh, and substantial efforts of the Philippine Red Cross in complementing uh, the DOH and government uh, laboratory testing outputs. Uh, as correctly pointed out, mga uh, 40% po ng atin uh, daily testing outputs ay uh, galing po sa PRC at sila po ay patuloy na nagpapaunlad ng kanilang kakayahan at nagpapatayo pa ng mga panibagong mga laboratorio uh, dahil uh, atin pong uh, inaasahan na ang mga OFWs na sila po ang kanilang matkadalasan tinetest ay maraming marami pa po ang darating sa mga susunod na mga panahon. So napaka mahalaga po talaga ang papel ginagampanan ng Philippine Red Cross. Salamat po. Mr. Chair, pwede magtanong isa lang? Senator Angara po. Go, go ahead, Senator Angara. Yeah, Secretary, good morning. Uh, can we find out bakit yung Red Cross na mabilis mag-ramp up nung testing capacity nila compared to other institutions? What explains that, Ho? Uh, yung pong uh, Red Cross ay uh, sa panahon kasi ngayon, na nakakapag-angkat sila nung uh, mga bagong mga testing uh, equipment, bago na po yung technology nila. Uh, kaya uh, mas mabilis po silang uh, makapag-ramp up. Hindi po kagaya natin na naapektuhan po tayo dahil yung mga dati natin na mga equipment na gumagana pa naman po ay hindi ganun kalaki ang kanilang mga outputs. Kanya, this explains the fact that because PRC has just uh, gotten into this uh, uh, testing, they have the advantage of uh, the current uh, technology, and especially that one from China, which is a very recent uh, acquisition na talagang may automate, autom uh, automatic extraction kits tayo kasi noong una, manualized tayo, but we're also moving uh, and trying to, uh, to uh, catch up uh, with uh, our uh, new uh, technology, uh, new machines, and uh, new ways of, uh, of uh, ramping up our testing uh, capacity. Salamat po. Uh, just a follow-up, Mr. Chair, ko okay lang. Uh... Right. There's a 10 billion or a 20 billion budget in the various stimulus bills, Secretary. Is that sufficient for you to purchase the new technology to ramp up the testing? Uh, yes, sir. In fact, meron na po tayong mga uh, inangkat through the PSDBM na mga uh, bagong uh, equipment. So the answer is uh, yes, sir. Uh, kasama po uh, so far sa po sa atin uh, budget and our projections. Salamat po. Uh, uh, sec, you mean you don't need additional funding, the 10 billion that's in the stimulus bills? There's a 10 billion item and another bill, it's 20 billion. Uh, sir, siguro I need to uh, get back to you uh, uh, on that because uh, very flux pa rin kasi ang COVID-19 situation. We have to really uh, make an assessment very regularly and depending on the projections, uh, we should be able to... Uh, uh, recommend if uh, additional funding is uh, required. Uh, thank you, yes, I, uh, Mr. Asking, Chairman. I'm asking, Mr. Chair, kasi alam nyo, i-extend na natin yung bayanihan uh, by next week cause, because we adjourn for the CNED uh, adjournment. Uh, so we need to know really when we pass that bayanihan if there are additional appropriation items that must be included. So sige, sec, hintayin po namin. Salamat, ho, Mr. Chair. Opposed. Salamat po, uh, Mr. Senator. Uh, we'll uh, get back to you, sir, uh, on that. Thank you. Uh, salamat, uh, Secretary Duques, uh, Senator Angara. Uh, additional uh, question po. Yung mabilis di ba sa, sa Red Cross magpapatest uh, what uh, Senator Angara said? Uh, ano bang proseso between uh, kung magpapatest ka sa Red Cross at magpapatest ka po diretso sa mga EOH uh, laboratories, uh, yung, yung bayad, 
Mauna ho ba yung uh, bayad or yung PhilHealth? The same process po. Uh, dadaan ka sa PhilHealth, babayaran po ang Red Cross. Kasi kung ganun, eh di direksyon na lang tayo sa Red Cross dahil mas mapabilis yung, uh, yung uh, proseso nila sa, sa testing. Importante po rito, <clears throat> malaman ka agad natin yung uh, uh, resulta. So, Secretary uh, Duque or Yusek Berhera, you may answer uh with your permission uh, can can we uh, uh please uh, uh let Yusek Vergere respond to the query Mr. Chair um yun pong proseso ng Philippine Red Cross at saka mga hospital po natin ay pareho lang po pag dumating po ang pasyente kung sakaling din po isa swab sa ating mga hospital o di kaya community po uh Ito po ay sinaswap dun sa facility or sa community and then sinesend sa laboratory. So it's the same process. It's the same financing mechanism din po. Ang nagkakaroon lang po talaga ng issue is because of the zoning of our laboratories. Uh, if uh, I would just like to give that information that for a specific laboratory po natin, meron po silang assigned areas. Uh, say for example lang center, ang kanya pong assigned areas would be Region 3, the whole of Region 3. Ayun uh, pong uh, Rizal area ng Region 4 at meron pa siya yung District 2 ng uh, Metro Manila. So ito po lahat ay sa lang center of the Philippines at bukod pa doon meron pa hong mga iba na nagpupunta ng mga ibang ahensya ng gobyerno ng mga frontliners natin. As compared with uh, the Philippine Red Cross, they do not have a specific assigned uh, area. Meron lang hong mga nakipag-MOA uh, sa kanila na mga local government at saka mga ibang ospital natin. Pero yung specific po na region or uh, specific city na talagang lahat po from that city would be a uh, course through Red Cross, hindi pa po yun nangyayari. Kaya po siguro malaki po ang diferensya ng turnaround time uh, between Red Cross and the other facilities that we have, Mr. Che. Salamat, uh, Yusef Barrere. Anyway, uh, to DOH pa rin po, Secretary Duque or uh, Yusef Barrere. Yung uh, using the bicycle as mode of uh, transportation or even motorcycle, no? we are exposed, open po yan. Uh, will this be healthy now given the level of pollution and warm weather? Magiging, hindi ba delikado po ito yung magpabike po tayo or nakamotog po tayo? Ano bang mga safety nets na pwede natin gawin? Nakapas ba o naka-helmet? Or si is, is it enough po yung mas lang dahil exposed ka po sa uh, makakahawa ba itong uh, coronavirus, yung COVID-19? Kung mas malaki ba yung chances of being uh, infected dito kung sakasakaling nagbabike ka o nagmumotor? Uh, with your permission, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Yun lang, uh, babalikan ko lang po saglit yung, uh, yung punto na sinabi po ni Senator Angara kanina about uh, additional budget. Nakalimutan ko po sabihin na marami din po mga donated na mga bagong equipment uh, for rapid, uh, uh, for uh, RT-PCR testing. So yun lang po, we will give the, uh, the uh, inventory of these new uh, testing machines for uh, RT-PCR. Now going back to the bicycle, uh, ride, uh, kinakailangan po yung uh, guidelines sa ngayon, binubuo po ng Department of uh, Transportation uh, kasama po ang DILG at saka ang DPWH dahil ang layunin po dito ay siguraduhin protektado ang mga nagbibisikleta po. Uh, kinakailangan po, meron silang uh, uh, protective gear, yung helmet, meron silang uh, knee uh, uh, shields, uh, elbow shields, at uh, lahat po ito para nang sa ganon ay uh, hindi hindi po sila uh, magkaroon ng uh, uh, na malubhang uh, uh, aksidente uh, at kaya anyway antayin na lang po natin itong uh, guidelines na ginagawa po ng DOTR at uh, meron na po silang mga proposed uh, bicycle lanes uh, along the major uh, uh, thoroughfares uh, and the secondary thoroughfares no so uh, yun lang po ang aking masasabi sa ngayon uh, yung po paggawa naman ng guidelines kasama din po ang uh, Department of Health uh, so, so yun lang po 
Malam selamat kok. Thank you Sekretari Duke. Itu pun sa opening of classes. I heard pag-usapan po ni Pangulong Duterte at ni Sekretari Leones along with Sekretari Ocel. Mamayang gabi. Kailan talaga ipa-finalize po yung pagbubukas ng klase at sa ngayon ay is it safe? Ako naman as a chairman po ng Committee on Health ay uunahin ko po ang uh, kalusugan uh, kapakanan ng bawat uh, bata na hindi na natin. No? Dahil kung hindi pa tayo siguradong safe ay hindi po ako sasangayon na magbubukas na kagad ng kasi. Pagamat uh, pag-uusapan pa yan na uh, Mamaya, with the President. Ngayon, patatanong ko lang po yung ating mga LGUs, especially dun sa mga areas na, na malalayo, yung may mga downgrade na po to uh, uh, GCQ at saka MGCQ, ay ano ho bang posisyon ninyo dito sa pagbubukas po ng uh, Klase, are you prepared or ano pong stand ninyo dito sa pagbukas? Uh, Mayor uh, Singson and uh, Governor Kuwa and Governor Velasco, you may give your uh, comments, please. Yes, Mayor, Mr. Chair. Uh, Bagamat uh, pinag-uusapan natin ngayon, uh, Department of Health, uh, hospitals, may paalala ko lang po na Like for example, in Ocosur, we have eight hospitals, including district hospitals. Ang gastos po ang probinsya yan, ang maintain lang, 605 million ang ginagastos niyo po namin dyan. Bakit hindi natin i-reduce na lang dalawang magandang hospital na lang, gawin na lang clinic yung mga iba, makakapaglingkot, makakatulong tayo yung bayan sa ating kababayan. Sa ngayon po, hindi kami nakakatulong dahil matak po sila sa mga private hospitals. Uh, magsama po ang image sa mga hospitals natin dahil basta ano yun namin, kulang-kulang. Uh, like for example dito sa Ilocosor, lahat ng mga doctors dito ay eh, konsultan namin pero uh, nagkoconsultan na may mga hospitals naman sila. So karamihan ng tao bubunta sa private hospitals, ang laking gastos nila. Hindi tayo nakakatulong. So ang suggestion mo po, sa ating mga babatas, kung pwede gawa ng paraan, i-reduce na lang yung mga hospital sa yung mga district, gawin na lang clinic, at uh, mag like, i-rosor, dalawa na lang na magaganda para makapag-compete kami sa mga private hospital. Makakatulong po tayo sa tao bayan. Pakicheck na rin ba ang mga ibang probinsya dahil halos lahat hirap-hirap po yung pagbintay namin sa mga hospital. Yun po, i-rosor lang, iwan ko sa mga ibang probinsya. Ganun din po nung araw, tinatanong ko sa mga kapabados, ang aking gastos nila. So, dapat po, baguhin na natin yung sistema. I-reduce ang hospital, pero yung magandang-magandang hospital. Yun lang po ang suggestion ko uh, dito po, uh, Mr. Chair. I hope uh, narinig ni Secretary Doke at uh, makipag-coordinate na rin sa mga senators natin uh, mga babatas para magawan po ng paraan itong malaking hirap bawat probinsya as far as the hospitals are concerned. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, uh, Governor. Uh, Mr. Chair, maraming salamat po sa iyong katanungan. Um, gusto ko rin po sanang uh, banggitin na uh, ako rin po, uh, meron akong mga mga anak na bata pa. So, sila ay uh, less than 10 years old at uh, tuwing napag-uusapan ng aming pamilya kung papasok na ba sila on August 27, in, uh, I have to be honest that uh, malaki pa, pa po ang pangamba ko na ang aking ang mga anak ay papasukin. Um, yung pong social distancing in schools na, sina, na pinag-uusapan, uh, to be very honest, eh, kung sabihin lang ng teacher na keep quiet, walang magsasalita sa mga bata, napakahirap pong patuparin yun sa mga, uh, sa mga elementary school. Uh, can we expect that to happen um, for, uh, 
or children to know na walang walang tapikan, walang hawakan ng kamay, walang uh, uh, playtime. So, napakahirap po talagang i-regulate, Mr. Che. Baka dapat maging mas practical tayo. And um, may I respectfully uh, beg our uh, legislators and our uh, our policymakers na pag-isipan na sa tingin ko po, ang mas mahalaga ay ang kalusugan at kapakanan, ang buhay ng ating mga anak, uh, at for this year alone, maybe we can be a little more flexible. Although DepEd is doing its best, uh, I have to give credit naman to DepEd na meron silang three or four modalities na pinag-aaralan on the delivery of education. Na meron pang hybrid, meron home, home uh, learning. Uh, pero po, uh, siguro po ako kasi kung napipilitan po ang ating DepEd na i-maintain yung 203 days minimum uh, school days of our children talagang uh, pipilitin nila yan whether it's uh, it's at home or in physically in the classroom ang ang mga walang kakayanan naman na mag-aral sa kanilang tahanan ay yung pinaka mga uh, pinaka least fortunate na ating mga kababayan dito sa Pilipinas so napakahirap po talaga yon na yung ating pang mga pinaka nahihirapan sa mga communities na challenge sila pa po yung mahi, mapipilitan na papuntahin yung mga anak nila sa eskwelahan o kaya uh, kung hindi man nila mapapapunta eh baka sumama naman po ang kanilang mga grades. So maybe uh, uh, a humble recommendation po of course uh, to our decision makers and policy makers uh, Senator Bong baka pwede pong maximum flexibility sa number of days na minimum required maximum flexibility to our uh, school system at least for the year po mas mahal sa tingin ko po our humble uh, proposal mas mahalaga po ang buhay at kalusugan ng kabataan uh, anyway hindi naman sila forever na hindi mag-aaral uh, at most siguro half a year or baka one year po eh, yun lang po ang aking uh, counting uh, reaction po senator go thank you po for asking us the LGUs uh, our opinion on the matter Salamat, Governor uh, Pua. Ako naman po uh, bilang isang uh, senador, ayaw ko pong uh, maanala ang pag-aaral ng mga bata, ng mga anak natin. Pero mas importante po sa akin yung kalusugan at kapakalang uh, bawat bata. So para sa akin, uh, no, uh, no physical uh, classes or Facebook so dapat uh, muna no vaccine no physical classes po. Chair. go ahead uh, uh, again uh, Mr. Chair uh, yung my humble opinion po uh, there's a proposal to uh, start the classes on August 24 uh in my view, uh, medyo maaga pa po yun. Sa tingin ko po, kahit na maraming areas na po under GCQ at saka medyo kukonti na po yung o halos wala po na infected person sa kanya-kanyang probinsya eh dahil po sa pagpasok ng mga OFWs at saka locally stranded individuals, eh malaki pa rin po yung risk na meron pong uh, malamang na pumasok so, delikado pong buksan niya ng August. And then, secondly po, eh, rainy season na po yun eh. So, tingin ko po, hindi naman mag-start kung talagang ready na po yung lugar. Baka bandang November or December or pwede na pong January. Kung meron pong required number of days, habuli na lang po dun sa bakasyon. Ano po? So, ang tingin ko po dyan, we should not start the classes until the LGU or LGUs are sure na yung kanilang lugar po ay halos COVID-19 free na po sa infection. So importante po ito pero alam din po natin how important the education is for our children and our students pero pwede naman pong i-delay hanggang January po pwede umpisahan kung ready na po yung lugar. So ganun lang po Mr. Chair. Thank you very much po. Salamat. Uh, Salamat. Uh, may we uh, uh, position of uh, Dr. Jaime Almora of the Philippine Hospital Association. 
Yeah, uh, good, good afternoon. It's uh, five minutes past 12, I guess, in my, in my watch. Yes, the, the, uh, as regards uh, Senate Bill 147, which is the modernis modernizing the regulation of health facilities and services, we believe that uh, Senate Bill 1132, which is about the hospital site development plan, can be absorbed in this bill. Particularly, it can, it can be absorbed under paragraph D of section 3, which is about the review and approval of construction designs, and in section 10, which is about construction design. Senate Bill 1132 uh, is about hospital regulation on the design of hospital, so it can be absorbed in Senate Bill 1437. Also, under Section 12, which is the application inspection and issuance of license to operate, under the context of the universal health care law, which is now being gradually implemented, the license to operate now becomes synonymous with the telehealth accreditation. Because under the universal health care law, all Filipinos will now be covered by PhilHealth. So once a hospital is, the, the present system is, an LTO is given by the DOH, but the hospital cannot, or the, the because patients, most, most of the patients are uh, under PhilHealth, the hospital effectively cannot operate unless they are accredited by PhilHealth. Under the universal health care law, all Filipinos now will be under PhilHealth. So effectively, LTO and accreditation become synonymous. Um, PhilHealth can withdraw or deny accreditation. If a, a hospital that is uh, denied or uh, the accreditation is withdrawn, the hospital is effectively dead. It cannot operate because there are no patients that is not covered by PhilHealth. Therefore, uh, hospitals now with LTO should continue to operate. Uh, violations committed against PhilHealth may be given penalties other than removal of accreditation. Penalties could be in the form of fines, but considering that under the universal healthcare law, LTO and accreditation now become synonymous, because a hospital without accreditation cannot continue to operate and therefore we have to drop their LTO. Uh, the, the LTO now in accreditation under PhilHealth should now be under the DOH and should, should fall under the quasi-judicial power of the uh, uh, Health Facilities Regulation Bureau. We have other uh, position on this matter, but uh, we will be giving the com we will be giving the committee a written um, position on this uh, uh, Senate bill. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Salamat, uh, Dr. Uh, Jaime Almora. May we now hear the position of uh, Dr. Rustico Jimenez of the Private uh, Hospitals Association of the Philippines. Good afternoon po. Ah, Nakamute kayo. Okay na. Good afternoon po sa inyong lahat. Uh, marami pong salamat, Mr. Chairman, Senator Bongo and Senator Angara. Uh, padadala na lang po namin ang position papers do sa mga bill na uh, being subject to hearing. Uh, isa lang akong comment regarding the bilis ng pagtetest ng results kasi po uh, ayaw po nga po maganda yung bill ni Dr. Angara, marami na pong uh, natin na apektuhan ng paghihintay sa ating mga quarantine places. Na quarantine na po sila sa abroad for 40 days. Negative na po sila. Naghihintay sa mga ships dyan sa Manila Bay. E upabot na po ng mga dalawang buwan. So siguro po, siyan lang po mapabilis pa po yung resulta para po hindi na po sila magsasama-sama. Then later on, uh, kaya po nagkakaganon din po, pagdating sa airport, hindi pa rin nila alam kung saan sila sasakay. 
wala pong schedule definitely kung saan sila sa ano. So, naghihintay na rin po yung mga nila sa probinsya na hindi natin ma mapagbigyan kaagad. We recognize them as uh, local uh, heroes, pero ang treatment natin kung sa kanila ay hindi po mukhang tama. At yung pong sa ating uh, licensing po, I would suggest na ibalik po natin through Atty. Lutero yung one-stop shop para po yung mga hospital, lalo na po yung maliliit, ang galing sa probinsya, hindi na po magpapalipat-lipat ng iba-ibang departments. Kung pwede po sa central office na lang po magpa-accredit. At yun po, pakiusap din na alam po natin na kulang talaga po yung ating mga doctors, kulang po ang ating mga nurses, kulang po ang ating mga medtex and kulang po yung ating mga ratex. Ngayon po na meron pa ang pandemya, marami po yung tinumaan, kaya po nagka-quarantine sila lahat. Yung iba, yung iba po nakukumpain pa. Fortunately, bumababa na po yung ating uh, uh, mga namamatay. But for your information, tatlong po, dalawang doktor na po yung namatay na nagsilbi sa ating mga pasyente. So, ayaw na po natin madagdagan po yun. At kung maaari po, uh, kung pwede naman ang pagbigyan yung mga undergraduate muna na wala pa ang lisensya, makakatulong po sa atin sa manpower sa hospital para po uh, makatulong sa servisyo na hindi naman kailangan po yung license. So para po yung trabaho ng mga licensed nurses natin ay talaga yung primarily for the nursing uh, facilities lang po talaga, yung talagang kailangan ng kanilang uh, uh, special training. Uh, Siguro po makakatulong din kung mapabilis natin yung accreditation ng mga private hospitals with uh, facilities na para sa laboratory. Kasi po yun ang mga reklamo sa amin ng mga private hospitals sa probinsya. May capability sila pero napakatagal po yung ano, approval. Of course, I understand virus po ang hawak natin at uh, live po. po. So, pinag-iingatan din natin po yung ating uh, mga health workers and of course yung surrounding ano kasi mga janitors involved din po diyan. At lastly, pakiusap po again, feel help, pakibilis-bilis naman po yung bayad sa amin kasi po marami na pong uh, hospital ang nagsuffer ng ano financial difficulties. Hindi naman po magde-deliver yung mga drug companies ng gamot na hindi mo babayaran. Hindi po naman pwedeng bayaran yung security guard, yung ating uh, Meralco. At nagbibigay po kami based on sa dole ng hazard pay. And ngayon po, in-ostracize pa yung mga mga trabador natin pag uwi sa yung mga higa uh, tirahan. Kaya po, nagpo-provide pa kami ng transportation sa ating mga uh, workers na nag, nagpi, nagpipilit po mag-duty. Uh, Doon po sa opening of classes, siguro po, uh, pag-usapan natin mabuti ito, whether bubuksan na po talaga. Kasi po, talagang mahirap po yung social distancing pag uh, nagbukas na po yung mga uh, schools. Uh, Nag-agreo kay governor na baka po magkahawa-hawa kasi yung mga bata hindi mo naman mapipigil pagtakbo at pagano. Ang siguro po, ang isa pa rin nakakalimutan, yung ating po, eh, ito po ay ano din ang DOH. I agree, kailangan po tuloy-tuloy yung vaccination kasi po pagdating ng tagulan, baka po dumami yung ating mga chicken pox, measles, uh, Dipteria and the rest at uh, dengue and leptospirosis kung hindi po natin pababakunahan yung ating mga anak. Kaya po dapat yung mga hospitals may separate po for COVID and non-COVID. Gumawa mo na po na kami ng paraan para ma-separate po yung daanan nila at to have sanitation for everything. Kaya lang po natatakot pa rin yung mga magulang dalhin yung mga bata for well baby. Kaya na, nakakalimutan po natin yung vaccination. At pagdating po po yung epidemic nito, mga dengue and the rest, ay baka po nalo tayong mahirapan. Yun lang po. Maraming salamat, uh, Chairman. Salamat po sa inyong uh, not only comments, pati advices na rin po. Salamat, uh, Dr. Jimenez. Ganda po ng iyong uh, earphone. Para kong DJ, sila mo yan binili. <laughs> Regalo lang po. Salamat po, Dr. Jimenez. Uh, nice to see you again. Uh, Dr. Uh, Gia Sison of the Philippine Alliance of Patients uh, 
organizations. May we hear your uh, comments? Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair, and good morning uh, to everyone po. Dr. Gia Season Paul representing Philippine Alliance of Patient Organizations. Mr. Chair, uh, we fully support uh, yung bill po ni Senator Angara. And uh, na-mention niyo po earlier importance ng mental health. Uh, three points lang po ang gusto ko i-raise dito. So una-una po, sana may integration of mental health protocols sa ating mga law enforcement operations. Uh, since ang mental health, uh, ang kaibahan po ng mental health law natin is it's human, human's rights based po siya. Number two is the uh, inclusion also of mental and uh, psychological support sa ating pandemic response. So hindi lang po siya, of course, nandun po yung humanitarian uh, support, pero bigyan po natin halaga yung mental aspect po, no? lalo na po dun sa mga naka-isolate. And lalo na po dun sa mga centers ng mga ligtas centers natin po. And lastly po is uh, mandatory and uh, institutionalization, uh, institutionalized participation po na ating mga service users in the conduct of mental health programs and policies. So kinakailangan po i-involve din po ang ating mga pasyente whenever we make policies po, no? mga dialogo po, importante po yan. Uh, yun po yung aking mga points to raise po, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. Salamat po, Ma'am uh, Doktora. Yes, sir. Mayor uh, Chavit Singson, uh, you were raising your hand. Any comments? Well, to call po sa uh, education, pag-aralan po mabuti dahil ma Uh, to suko yun, mga kabataan ay yun ang future, ang future leaders natin. Eh, Makupromise sila. So, mas importante po yung uh, survival kaysa education. Uh, ano mo education kung mamatay naman yung mga bata. So, pag-aralan po mabuti, as far as uh, my, uh, as far as concerned as Mr. Chair, so, medyo delikado po ito. So, pag-aralan po mabuti. Mr. Chair, isa lang, just a small point. Senator Gara. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, pasalamat tayo kay Dr. Jimenez at Dr. Season for the support uh, doon sa health bills. I understand the uh, ang mental health case rate po ng PhilHealth is only 7,800. Uh, from my limited knowledge, hindi naman tayo eksperto dito, Mr. Chair, pero baka kulang ho yun. Baka pwedeng i-request sa PhilHealth, sa DOH, I understand they have a health... Uh, HTAC, I, I, don't, I forgot what it stands for, a Health Technology Assessment Council, something like that, which uh, uh, assesses or, or determines whether there's a need to uh, amend the case rates. And I, I maybe they could take a look lang, Mr. Chair, dito sa case rates for mental health. Kasi nga, uh, in light of what our resource persons have shared, na it's on the uptick given the a number of uh, people uh, cooped up or quarantined. Uh, baka, baka panahon na po na gumawa ng separate case rates for different cases. I don't know. Uh, let's leave it to the experts. But uh, perhaps we could get the ball rolling in that respect. Kasi like in the case of uh, Corporal Ragos, his medication for his mental health ailment was 1,000 pesos a month. So in eight months, ubus na po yung kanyang gamot. Uh, yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, kung pwede lang po akong uh, uh, sumagot, uh, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead uh, uh, for, for your information, Mr. Chairman and uh, the good Senator, uh, uh, Senator Angara, yung pong cost data on uh, mental health services, uh, kasama po natin yung pag-generate ito, yung Alliance for Improved Health Outcomes, noong pong nakaraan September 2019 to March 2020, At uh, ito po ay uh, riripasuhin, i-review po ng atin na uh, benefits uh, development, research and development. Kasama po actually by uh, the third quarter of 2020, precisely to uh, respond po doon sa inyong sinasabi na yung case rate, baka hindi na po siya sensitive uh, doon po sa atin mga mental, uh, mental health uh, patients. Kanya, maganda po yung inyong uh, sinabi at uh, binibigyan din ko po sa PhilHealth bilang chairman uh, of the board 
na kinakailangan talaga nga uh, i-review na ito at kung uh, pwedeng ma-ramp up ang uh, support uh, support uh, value ng uh, ng PhilHealth sa mga iba't ibang mga kondisyon na nakakaapekto po doon sa mental health ng ating mga kababayan. Yun lang po uh, ginong chairman. Mr. Chair, also take care, let's take care of our nurses and doctors pati sila meron din daw mga mental health issues aside from our OFWs and the youth, no? Baka we have a special uh, uh, hotline for or person to take care of our health personnel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We'll do, uh, Mr. Chairman. Sa Salamat, uh, Secretary Duque. Uh, if uh, there are no more questions, we shall uh, take note the comments and recommendations uh, in our uh, report. Uh, let us now uh, proceed. Uh, last in our agenda is the bill of uh, Senator Angara amending the uh, Mental Health Act to provide uh, compensation to workers. Uh, may we uh, hear the DOA's position. Marami po ngayon na depress dahil sa sitwasyon ngayon. At uh, in fact, uh, meron pong nakalungkot, no? Uh, yung mga OFWs natin ay uh, napakatagal na napalayo sa kanilang mga pamilya. Alam nyo, hindi nababayaran yung uh, lungkot. Uh, napakahirap uh, napalayo sa pamilya. Ikli lang ng buhay natin and ilang taon pa po uh, napapalayo sa pamilya. Dahil kailangan po nilang magtrabaho. Uh, Kaya nung umuwi na po sila rito sa ating bansa, at uh, dapat naman sumunod po sila sa mga quarantine uh, protocols. Pero uh, exceeding the days po ng quarantine protocols, napakahirap na po yun. Until now, marami po mga stranded na OFWs na lanawagan pa rin po sa atin na gusto na pong makauwi sa kanilang mga probinsya. Sabi ko, unahin muna natin yung health protocols. Pero sana po ay uh, tanggapin natin sila ng uh, panuwag at uh, mahalin po natin sila. Pilipino rin po ito. So, uh, may, we, may we know what is the effect of COVID-19 to our people's mental health? How are we giving assistance to people with mental health conditions during this pandemic? Ilan po ang natutulungan natin and how can they have access uh, to help? No? Uh, to DOH po yung aking mga katanungan. Uh, especially po itong sa issue ng uh, depression po. Uh, go ahead, uh, Secretary Duque. You may uh, answer. Uh, may I uh, request with your permission, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Director Nap Arevalo, uh, to please respond uh, to the question. Director Nap Arevalo, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, uh, Secretary Duque. Thank you, uh, uh, Sir Chairman. Uh, uh, to date, uh, we are providing services to our, uh, to our, not only to our repatriates, by way of our hotline, which was launched by the National Center for Mental Health. Then po tayong uh, hotline na na pinalagana pina para sila ay uh, uh, magkaroon ng access sa mental health services. It's not only limited to the government uh, uh, service providers for mental health and psychosocial support, but we are also linking with uh, other non-government organizations that are providing mental health and psychosocial support. In fact, uh, uh, inorganisa po ng uh, uh, public health uh, services team, ang roving uh, mental health and psychosocial support, which is led by our health emergency bureau, to take note of the uh, mental health conditions uh, among our repatriates and those in quarantine facilities. Likewise, we are uh, extending our mental health and psychosocial support to our health workers. Uh, particularly that of the frontline workers, and these have been uh, be, uh, these are conducted uh, led by our uh, program managers at the Center for Health Development, we call at the subnation uh, Center for Health Development nationwide, uh, uh, taking a look into the conditions of our 
uh, frontline health workers uh, to, for us to be able to provide the uh, uh, mental health and psychosocial support. Uh, meron tayong mga regional mental health council that is overseeing uh, the activities and uh, uh, programs which is and services which are, which are being extended to our uh, frontliners. Uh, also, gusto namin ay I reiterate yung ating uh, hotlines, yung tumawag sa National Center for Mental Health uh, Crisis Hotline, uh, that is the NCMH USAP, na meron tayong mga linya na may, pwedeng ma-access ng ating, uh, ng ating mga uh, those uh, frontline workers as well as the repatriates in the quarantine facilities so that they will be provided with mental health and psychosocial support. Uh, siguro by the end of uh, next week, may makukuha tayong uh, updates uh, based on the roving team of mental health and psychosocial support, which is led by our Health uh, Emergency Management Bureau. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Secretary Duque. Uh, may we now hear uh, from... Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, uh, very quickly, lang po, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Yung pong atin, uh, salamat po, yung National Center for Mental Health Crisis Hotline, uh, ang tawag po nito, NCMH USAP. Ang uh, telepono po nito, 0917-899-USAP. 8727 po yun. At 7989-USAP-8727. Just in case lang, ma-i-blast ma po natin. Salamat po. May we now hear uh, ASEC uh, Teresita Kukweko of uh, DOLE. Um, good, good morning, uh, Honorable Chair and Senator Angara. Uh, Secretary Bellio wishes to convey his regard, warm regards po to you. And on the matter of the bill of Senator Angara, the DOLE fully supports the bill as work-relatedness of mental health conditions has long been proven. The financial assistance is truly a welcome benefit for those affected individuals or affected workers. We just also want to uh, uh, manifest to the body that the Employees' Compensation Commission of the Dole can also already provide compensation benefits for workers who may be experienced or are diagnosed with mental health conditions. Stress at work, um, conditions at work that may lead to these mental health conditions and affecting the workers are uh, will be proven and they can be compensated with the employees compensation fund so with this and the additional benefits that the law envisions to provide this is definitely going to be a very welcome benefit especially as we know that mental health conditions during this pandemic is increasing so with this sir we are supporting the bill of senator angara good afternoon po Salamat, uh, Asset, uh, Teresita. May we now uh, hear uh, Director Antonio Escudero of the Civil Service Commission. Uh, thank you very much, Your Honor. Magandang, hap, uh, magandang tanghali po sa lahat ng uh, participants. Uh, good, magandang tanghali din, uh, Senator Angara. Uh, the Civil Service Commission uh, fully supports uh, the, the, the proposal uh, we uh, we would just like to recommend that uh, the the word immediately be cut be uh, be characterized in the sense that uh, and we suggest that uh, the 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 period provided under uh, Republic Act 10154 or the early release of retirement benefits be be followed uh, so that the word immediately uh, in the in the proposal be characterized uh it will not be vague because sometimes if 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 a word is vague in a, in a law uh it, it is prone to uh several interpretations uh your honor may, may we also comment on the health facilities uh bills Go ahead. because yes your honor because uh we noticed that uh the bureau one of the powers of the Bureau is to hire and train competent 
individuals and provide qualifications for personnel to, personnel to be designated as regulatory officers. Uh, this this uh, this provision may be limiting the powers of the bureau to hire uh, its personnel to only regulatory officers. This may be interpreted that the bureau cannot hire uh, support support staff. So uh, I think uh, this this provision should be should be uh, revised in a way that the bureau has the power to 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 hire personnel that that would uh, enable it to, to perform its duties uh, fully well. Uh, those are just, uh, those are our comments, Your Honor. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, sir. May we recognize again Secretary Duque to officially give the position of the DOH? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the DOH poses no objection to the said amendment because of its laudable uh, objective reinforcing the rights of employees in terms of monetary compensation that can help alleviate uh, his or her burden. This is uh, in keeping with the presidential decree number 6261 for private and public employees and the public act number 6963 for our uniform personnel. Ito po yung uh, uh, Senator uh, Angara kanina at nakakalungkot po yung pangyayaring iyon at sana hindi na po maulit uh, sa pagkakataon ma sa katuparan ng batas na ito. Uh, the uh, uh, RA6963 uh, for uniform personnel provides for compensation benefits and or special financial assistance in the event a worker sustains a disability while in the performance of duty or by reason of his or her position. We are hopeful that through this amendment, employers will build and invest more in robust mental health policies and programs in the workplace. Physical and mental resilience uh, is important to keeping our population healthy and productive. This is indeed a win-win uh, for employers and employees. We would like to uh, recommend, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, to change the phrase mental disability to mental health conditions, as the phrase is already being used in RA number 11036. And if I may be allowed to read, mental health conditions refer to a neurologic or psychiatric condition characterized by the existence of a recognizable clinical significant, clinically significant disturbance in an individual's cognition, emotional regulation, or behavior that reflects a genetic or acquired dysfunction in the neurobiological, psychosocial, or developmental processes underlying mental functioning. The determination of neurologic and psychiatric conditions shall be based on scientifically accepted medical nomenclature and best available scientific and medical evidence. The above definition encompasses the definition of mental disability in the implementing rules and regulations of the Magna Carta for Disabled Persons, or RA 7277, to wit. Mental disability is a disability resulting from organic brain syndromes, an example of which is mental retardation, acquired lesions of the central nervous system, dementia, and mental illness, psychotic and non-psychotic disorders. And finally, Mr. Chairman, when RA number 11036 was crafted, we refrain from using the term mental disability and or mental illness uh, to lessen the uh, uh, stigmatis stigmatization and uh, discrimination. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Salamat po, Secretary uh, Duque. May we now hear the position of uh, Attorney uh, Jason Peng of the GSIS. Attorney Jason Tang. Uh, good afternoon, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Senator uh, Lucio, Attorney Lucio Yu Jr. from the GSIS. Attorney, uh, go ahead, sir. Okay, uh, we, thanks, we thank the committee for inviting GSIS to share our 
views on the specifically on Senate Bill 1471 sponsored by uh, Senator Dara, which uh, seeks to amend uh, the Mental Health Act, uh, add uh, a provision letter U, uh, emphasizing the urgency to to provide and uh, pay the compensation benefits uh, for uh, service users, meaning those. Uh, uh, people with uh, mental health conditions under existing law. Uh, we fully support this bill, and uh, we just want to share with the committee also that uh, under existing law, GSIS uh, is giving uh, benefits, what we call as uh, disability benefits, to uh, those with have uh, brain injury, uh, which includes uh, mental disorders organic or uh, both organic and psychotic and uh, with these amendments we believe that uh, uh, the, this will now give emphasis just like a PWD and senior citizens of uh, giving uh, critical uh, measures and benefits to these uh, 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 members of the society and uh, uh, we also like to join the Civil Service Commission in the earlier comment that uh, we provide a specific time period of uh, how immediate it would be. And uh, I also joined the Civil Service in uh, recommending that uh, 30 days under the, the law on early release of retirement benefits will be reasonable. That's all, uh, sir. Salamat po, sir. May we now hear the position of the uh, from uh, Social Security System, Attorney Joseph Padesunya. Uh, good, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, Senator Angara. Uh, we will be submitting po our. Uh, formal written opposition statement but uh, initially this is our uh, findings on the uh, senate bill 1471 authored by uh, senator angara we note that the sss is not expressly mentioned in the bill but uh, it also involves the uh, proposed grant of compensation benefit or financial assistance in case of temporary or permanent mental uh, disability and we wish to report to this uh, Senate committee that uh, the SSS actually is administering two funds, major funds, the Social Security Fund and the Employees' Compensation Fund. Both of these uh, funds are uh, being accessed to provide uh, benefits to SSS-qualified members who are afflicted with mental ailments. Uh, these benefits are in the form of sickness benefits and disability Based on the criteria to entitlement set for each benefit and pursuant to existing rules and guidelines, that member, based on the SSS manual on uh, evaluation of medical claims, which is uh, the one that provides us guidance in determining which benefit uh, an SSS member diagnosed with a mental condition is qualified to, will be paid either for disability or sickness benefit. In general, those mental conditions that are chronic and permanent are granted disability benefits. The amount varies. This could be in the form of a lump sum benefit or a monthly pension plus dependence pension if with a dependent. However, for those mental conditions that are temporary, uh, ito po ay nabibigyan ng sickness benefit which is equivalent to 90% of the member's average daily salary credit. Tungkol po dito sa dapat uh, work-connected or work-related ang pagkakabalda o pagkakasakit na may kinalaman sa usaping mental ng isang SSS member, nagbibigay din po ang SSS ng benepisyo under the uh, EC law, ito po yung PD626 as uh, amended. So in effect, for uh, a sick or a disabled uh, SSS member with mental ailment, dalawa po ang nabibigay sa kanyang benepisyo kung ito po ay 
kung uh, uh, incurred or uh, in the performance of one's duty or by reason of his or her position or functions in the office. Uh, Maari ko po bang i-share ang mga criteria for entitlement uh, kung anong klaseng benepisyo ang uh, maibibigay? Uh, ibinigay po ito sa akin ng aming Medical Services Division uh, para po may uh, guidance po kung ito ba ay sickness or disability benefits and uh, how will this be uh, made available po to our uh, SSS uh, members. Mr. Chairman, okay po. Uh, for sickness benefits, uh, the member must have been confined in the home or in a hospital for at least four days. The qualifying contribution of at least three monthly contributions within the 12-month period immediately preceding the uh, semester of uh, contingency must be present. Another point is the rule on notification which must be complied also. And last, that member must have used up all available company sick leaves with pay. Now, the criteria for entitlement for disability benefits are as follows. The member must have at least one month qualifying contribution prior to the semester of contingency. Pag ang hulog niya po ay one or less than 36 months, dito po nagbabayad ang SSS ng lump sum benefit. Pero pag may hulog na po siya na 36 months and uh, uh, more, nabibigyan siya po ng uh, tinatawag na pension uh, benefits. The rest of the criteria are as follows. Prescriptive period of filing is 10 years after onset of illness and that the onset of the illness must be after SSS coverage. So sa ngayon po, yun ang aming uh, may share at may report po sa uh, Senate Committee. Uh, in behalf of our President, si President and CEO Baby Ignacio, nagpapasalamat po kaming muli sa pag-imbita at sa bibigay ng uh, pagkakataon sa SSS na makapag-participate po dito sa legislative making process na ito. Yun lang po at maraming salamat. Salamat po, sir. Uh, next is uh, Dr. Roland Cortez of the National Center for Mental Health. May we hear your... Uh, position or comments. Good afternoon, uh, Your Honor. Uh, we at the National Center for Mental Health support the Senate Bill uh, 1471 as introduced by His Honorable uh, Senator Sanya Cara. The National Center for Mental Health regards this act of amendment as a noble agenda to promote mental health well-being, promote human rights and reduce disability in the workplace. While it is generally supports this action plan, it is worthwhile to uh, give consider considerable regard into some of the elements of this agenda due to its significant relevance and implications in the Philippine system culture, and overall governance, including past experiences of the Philippine government in addressing its mental health problem in the workplace. Honorable uh, Sir, we really uh, would like to recommend that while the Mental Health Act provides that the workplace shall have mental health and wellness measures as part of their health and safety program, it is recommended that this program shall categorically state the inclusion in the provisions of compensation as stated in other existing laws which has been extensively discussed a while ago where illness happens in the workplace. The burden of proving the uh, causal link as necessary in the claims shall not rest on the service users and shall not preclude the provisions of compensation and sustain access to mental health services as well as the provisions of medicines as what happened to uh, the corporal uh, being uh, discussed a while ago. Mental health care providers in the tertiary level 
shall likewise be provided in the law of its unique compensation hazard pay. We know for a fact, Your Honours, that uh, all uh, health workers are given uh, hazard pay as mandated in the Magna Carta for health workers. But uh, we are trying to appeal in this bill, if it can be included, the uh, extra provisions of uh, risk pay, perhaps, or uh, other hazard pay more than the other uh, health facilities that are doing general uh, services. Because uh, as we noticed in the past, uh, working in a mental institution actually requires uh, greater risk as compared to other uh, hospitals in the country. And this is what we are just uh, asking to be included in this honorable bill, Your Honours. Thank you so much. Mr. Chair, if I may. Go ahead, Senator Angara, sir. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, wala tayong objection dun sa proposal ni Dr. Cortez. No? Bahala na si ang committee siguro to uh, harmonize any proposal uh, from their end. Uh, ang tanong ko lang, Mr. Chair, have we noticed uh, itong panahon po ng pandemic? Eh, nadagdagan ba yung kaso ng mental health? Maybe if uh, there is data from the DOH or from the NCMH or whoever can answer, Mr. Chair. Gusto lang natin malaman ano yung sitwasyon at uh, ano yung klaseng mga ailments ang uh, dumami kung sakasakali? DOH, uh, kindly uh, answer. Secretary Duque, nakamute yata si Secretary Duque. Nakabukas po ako. Nakabukas po Go ahead, uh, go ahead uh, Secretary Duque. You may answer. Yeah, salamat po. Si uh, Director uh, Rolando Cortez ng National Center for Mental Health uh, must uh, be in the best position to answer. With your permission, Mr. Chairman. Dr. Cortez. Go ahead, uh, Dr. Cortez. Uh, when we did the lockdown, last, uh, we started the lockdown uh, on uh, the National Center for Mental Health last uh, March. Uh, we noticed because we have, uh, as discussed a while ago, we have uh, a crisis hotline that is open uh, open 24/7. And was uh, and as it was mentioned a while ago, the crisis hotline of 0917-899-8789. Or uh, our 989 USAP 8727 was uh, actually being bombarded with calls. And uh, from a mere, uh, actually, we only have about uh, 60 to uh, 80 calls at that time before the, the uh, COVID uh, issue. And uh, when we started to have this lockdown, uh, we had a uh, and almost 400, 300 to 400 calls per month. Meaning to say that uh, there are a lot of people wanting to communicate with uh, uh, the uh, experts that we place in the uh, crisis hotline that actually were uh, mostly due to anxiety and depression because of uh, the quarantine and lockdown that has been going on. And, uh, we are also happy to uh, inform the general public that we are in support also of other agencies like the OWAC, where uh, our teams are being called to evaluate our uh, uh, OFWs who are uh, experiencing some degree of uh, problems mentally. And uh, our teams are actually uh, there to support all these agencies that uh, needs uh, uh, our uh, interventions and evaluation. So uh, we can safely say that uh, based on our existing data that uh, there are a lot of uh, problems that are being uh, experienced by our uh, uh, people due to uh, these uh, lockdowns and quarantine Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Salamat po, Doc. Uh, salamat. Uh, 
Dito po sa proposed amendments ni Senator Angara sa mental health law, in the event uh, a worker including uh, frontliner sustains a mental uh, disability while in the performance of duty or by reason of his or her position, they will be provided with uh, compens compensation benefits and or special uh, financial uh, assistance. Uh, let me now uh, proceed to another resource person, uh, Dr. Uh, Amadeo Alinea of the Philippine uh, Psychiatric Association. May, may we uh, your position? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, we, we agree with, uh, we, we support uh, Senator Angara's uh, position regarding uh, health benefits for uh, workers, especially those who suffered uh, mental health issues as what we call service-connected uh, incidents. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Secretary Duque for helping us increase the uh, package benefits for the field health. Primarily the current rate would only probably last for one week, especially for private hospitals, it would not really be enough. We would also wish to increase the number of items for uh, psychiatrists in a medical center, especially for the regional area. So they would not have to bring their uh, patients in Metro Manila. As we all know, majority of the psychiatrists are in the area of Metro Manila. And that uh, very much lacking are the ones in the areas of Mindanao and Visayas. The Philippine Psychiatric Association actually opened a Mind Matters uh, hotline for frontliners. And we are also uh, helping other local governments, uh, particularly we are in contact with the San Juan office of the office of the mayor in San Juan City when it was hit by the COVID in the areas of the area. So most of our members now are opening up a uh, uh, mental health uh, helpline in their respective uh, uh, hospitals, private and both governments. But our only issue probably is the lack of number. And uh, again, the, for, for hospitals, I think uh, the, the, the position of uh, Senator Lapid and that of uh, Senator Rivera is that we should be able to have an equal opportunity for the budgets for mental health as compared to all other medical, uh, facility, medical areas. As we all know that uh, Mental health is always in a lot of times in the last uh, agenda of most uh, big hospitals. Uh, hopefully, for the establishment of uh, mental health facilities in all regional centers would be a very big help. So it will not congest not only the Metro Manila Hospital but also the National Center for Mental Health, as we all know that is the uh, the biggest uh, mental health uh, institution. So be, to be able to decongest. I think all regional hospitals for DOH should be able to establish a mental health unit. Uh, thank you very much, Your Honor. Salamat po, sir. Uh, next is uh, Dr. Rosie De Leon of the Philippine Nurses Association. May we hear your uh, comments? Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, I was at the... uh, Senator Bongo, may Thank you, thank you very much, Paul. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, po. Yes, good afternoon, po. Good afternoon. Yes, go, go ahead, po, uh, Dr. Rossi. From the Philippine Maybe. Nurses Association. Uh, maraming salamat po, Senator Go, for the invitation. Uh, we will forward the written position statement. Uh, the Philippine Nurses Association, po, is in support of the because we are the most affected group, human nurses po. Uh, the bill will definitely help our nurses because without nurses, I believe, pardon me for this, 
will not we will not win in any battle that we have. Um, I am requesting, therefore, in behalf of our nurses, to invest in our nurses to help achieve the universal health coverage and sustainable development goals. And at the same time, these laws will become effective in addressing similar concerns in the future. Um, Senator, I just want to uh, say something. Para po, pagka magkaroon na rin po ng another or similar concerns in the future, sana po, a clear guidelines will already be in place. Okay po. So, in every situation that we have, there will be a thorough assessment. And um, after which there will be a concrete plan so that the main government agencies responsible for the situation will already be acting. So, nandiyan na po yung budget, nandiyan na po yung resources, so the adequate manpower that we will have who are the people or who are the government agencies to be tasked who will implement such. We should have an adequate supplies kasi po medyo na-delay po tayo dito and uh, adequate facilities so that whatever is, hindi lang po yung mental health na to, but all of, uh, especially in this pandemic, para ma-prevent din po yung ating uh, spread or ma-prevent yung pagdami. And uh, of course, there will be prompt intervention to include the monitoring and surveillance. And siguro po mas maganda dito is a very good reporting system and a feedback will be given uh, at this time to the uh, Department of Health. So, uh, Senator, thank you very much for the invitation. We will be also forwarding the recruitment of the association, the Philippine Nurses Association. Maraming salamat po. Salamat po, uh, Doctora. May we now uh, hear uh, Dr. June Lopez uh, of the Mental Health Expert, Advocate for the Mental uh, Health Law. Kindly, Doctora. Good afternoon po. Narinig po ako? Opo. Uh, Unang-una po, marami pong salamat sa invitasyon na makalok sa usapin na ito. Ang uh, gusto ko po lang uh, liwanagin po na ako yung nagsasalita, hindi uh, bilang isang kinatawa ng UP College of Medicine kasi po ako ay retired na. At uh, ako po ay isa sa mga original drafters ng Mental Health Act na binubuo ng both private at government sectors. At uh, talaga pong uh, yan po ay isang bagay na napaka-proud kami, nakakontribute kami sa sa ating uh, legislation, sa ating mga efforts na higyang diin ang kahalagahan ng kalusugan pangkaisipan, uh, lalong-lalo na itong nakikita natin ngayong COVID. Pero dati pa, dahil tayo ay laging uh, nasasalanta ng mga kalamidad at uh, uh, nakita po namin na lagi na lang nasa huli na priority ang mental health pagdating po sa mga ating gastusin, ating mga budget, kaya po nakita namin yung pagkakataon na bigyang diin talaga ang kahalagahan ng ating nusug-isip. Um, uh, kami po, uh, ako po, uh, bilang kinatawa ng mga drafters ng RA 11036, ay nalulugod po dun sa amendment na pinupropose ni Senator Sani Angara. We welcome it very much. Um, we actually see that it is very appropriate. Uh, we will admit that uh, Section 5 of R8 uh, 11036 was not that specific when it comes to mental health in the workplace and that one of them uh, we probably admittedly missed was the uh, compensation side of uh, what Senator Angara is saying now as work-related mental health problems. Um, napapasalamat din po ako na Sen uh, uh, Secretary Duque mentioned um, a very new and, and very progressive uh, part of the RA 11036, which is our definition of menta mental health and the mental health problems. We um, uh, decidedly did not use the word mental disability kasi napaka-limiting napaka po noon. At gusto ko lang banggitin na karamihan ng mga compensation natin para sa mga disabilities 
ay nakabatay pa sa isang napakalumang legislation, um, PD-626, na dinidefine ang mental, uh, mental health problems as mainly brain injuries. Kaya may kinakailangan po talagang i-review natin at i-harmonize natin ang mga batas na may kinalaman sa ating mental health. Um, Patawarin niyo po ako kung medyo inexperienced po ako sa legislative process. I'm just here to be a clinician, a practitioner, and to raise certain situations which might be of interest for legislation. Um, we might have very good laws on paper, pero as we say, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Uh, kami po sa 40 years na pag-servisyo uh, ko sa PGH uh, ay nakatanggap ng karamihan ng mga problema lalo na tungkol sa mga OFWs natin. Mga OFWs natin na umuwi, uh, depressed na depressed, suicidal. In fact, recently, may isang kaso tayo na nagaantay sa quarantine na natuluyan at nagpakamatay sa hotel, sa isang hotel na pinaglagakan sa kanila. Um, Napaka-contentious po ng uh, ibig sabihin ng mental health problems. Uh, kaya may kinakailangan pong yung, yung definition na yon yung work-related mental health problem ay isa po bagay na dapat uh, himayin at uh, madalas yun po ang pinag-aawayan. Uh, ano po yung um, work-related? Ang pinaka-experience ko pong sa site dyan ay nakapag-gamot uh, ako ng apat na survivors ng uh, piracy seamen na nag-survive ng piracy na sa ng mga Somalians. Sila po ay declare na normal and fit to work by uh, the company uh, psychiatrist and only that uh, assessment to be reversed by one hospital and by myself when I was asked by an the uh, foreign uh, ship owner to give a different opinion. And so, that means po, uh, marami po tayong problema rin bukod sa definition sa arbitration ng cases. Who judges cases or claims? Sino nagsasabi ng work-related at hindi work-related? Madalas po ang nag-a-assess uh, nag ay uh, mga doktor or mental health professionals or uh, uh, mga dalbhasa daw na konektado dun sa kumpanya or dun sa insurer. So, nakakaroon po ng conflict of interest. Gaya nga po dun sa sinabi kong apat na kaso ng piracy na aking nahawakan nung nakaraang ilang taon. Uh, nakaranas na rin po ako na bilang membro ng isang hospital na hingan ng hospital ng uh, certification na isang pasyente may psychiatric problem ay hindi na fit to work. So meron tayo pong mga question na sino po ba ang dapat mag-decide uh, na kung ano po yung work-related at hindi work-related. Pangatlo po na gusto ko sanang masilip at pag-aralan din po ay uh, paano po ba iiwasan yung takot ng mga empleyado na may magkakaroon ng reprisal. Uh, napaka-tindi po nito, napaka-vulnerable ng mga empleyado. Uh, madali hong mag-claim ng mga naputulan ng kamay, ng paa, pero pag nag-claim ka ng uh, abuse, even sexual harassment laban sa isang empleyado, boss mo sa kumpanya, uh, maari pong maging bumalik sa iyo ng ilang isang napaka um, malaking dagok sa reputasyon mo o siraan ka sa susunod na uh, trabaho mo. Meron din po pang-apat mga legislative moves na nagko-contradict sa RA 11036. Um, uh, narinig ko po na mayroon pong move na gawing general hospital ang NCMH. Ako po ay hindi naman uh, nasa prosesong yon at hindi ko po masasabi ang, ang detalye doon. Pero meron po sa amin nagtataas po ng concern uh, tungkol sa move na yan dahil yung RA 11036 ay binansaga ng National Center for Mental Health as our National Center for Training and Research in Mental Health. 
ano po ang implications ng mga moves na gawin yung isang general hospital. Uh, I think that is a um, concern for our legislature, le- legislators. Ang panglima at huli po ay yung tungkol sa budget. Nabanggit na rin po ng mga uh, mayors at um, si yung mga ating nasa local government na yun na nga po maganda ang batas pero wala naman pong pondong kasabay na para ipairalin ito ng tama. Nakakalungkot na ang syntax provision ng RA 11036 ay nanalo sa Senado pero natalo sa Kongreso. So ngayon ang question po ay saan po kukunin ang mga budget? Lalo na po yung mga kumpanya at ang karanasan namin Ang mga kumpanya, pag sinabi po namin na alam nyo bang kayo na kailangan magkaroon ng programa at compensation para sa mga uh, kawani ninyo, ang ituturo po sa amin yung mga HMO health providers. So sinasabi nila na hindi po nila sakop at hindi nila obligasyon, kundi obligasyon po ng mga HMO health providers. Yun po yung mga ilan sa mga concern ko. Uh, bagamat kam- ako po isang ayong sang ayon sa amendment ni Senator Angara na ito po yun, na dapat ay uh, talagang bigyan nating pansin yung kakulangan ng compensation ng mga kawani, kawani natin na nagkakaroon ng mental health problems sa kanilang trabaho. Maraming pong salamat. Maraming salamat, uh, Doktora. Uh, does uh, Senator Angara have uh, any further questions or issues to be uh, raised regarding this uh, topic, uh, Senator Angara? Wala na po, Mr. Chairman, at uh, we want to thank all our resource persons who supported. And we want to thank you also because we just filed this a few weeks ago and you scheduled it immediately. Thank you for your prompt action, Mr. Chair. Salamat sa ating mga gobernador, mga doktor. And we again thank them for their service uh, in this uh, very important time. Baka last reminder, Mr. Chair, sa sinabi ho ni nung last resource person natin, si Doktora, our psychiatrist, sabi niya na hindi ata alam ng mga uh, employers na it's part of their uh, our responsibility. Since we have ASEC Kokoeko with us, perhaps we could ask her to uh, remind or maybe if we to amend the uh, law in respect to occupational hazards, perhaps but also in the meantime, pending that possible amendment, we could remind employers about their obligations under the Mental Health Act. Salamat ulit, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chair, go ahead, Pa. May I be recognized, Dr. Jaime? Yes, uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, good afternoon again. The the Philippine Hospital Association would like to make an input on this uh, proposed uh, bill. Uh, we recognize the noble purpose of the the bill in seeking to amend RA one one zero six three and provide compensation and financial assistance to temporary or permanent mental disorder. However, we would like to uh, advise caution in uh, the identification of these mental disorders. We see the need to be more specific on the mental disabilities, temporary or permanent, that can then be compensated by PhilHealth or the employer. This is because under the context of the universal healthcare law, where the outpatient package will be available in the near future, uh, this compensation by PhilHealth or maybe employer may be abused. There is also a need to list the exclusions to the compensable mental illnesses or mental conditions. I can foresee that without specifically excluding some conditions, I can foresee all medical students availing of this uh, of this uh, compensation, or also uh, students and possibly the cadets in the Philippine Military Academy. These are being subjected to a lot of stresses that causes some temporary mental condition. And uh, also, I can foresee employees who may not wish to report to work going to the outpatient clinics, uh, claiming some mental conditions due to stresses 
that will be availing of the uh, packages. I also, our concern is uh, that uh, we have to remember that unlike physical conditions, mental illnesses have very few, especially the temporary ones, have very few signs, and especially laboratory examination will not yield any uh, conclusion. You cannot do a blood test, you cannot do CT scan or MRI for mental illnesses to be objective in your diagnosis. The, the professional, the psychiatrist who would be assessing, if we are lucky to have a psychiatrist, because there are very few psychiatrists in the country who are qualified to assess a mental condition, will be giving a professional uh, opinion, but still most of these professional opinions are subjective in nature. Also, we can foresee that there will be plenty of denials of our claim reimbursements to feel help in the hospitals because uh, some of the conditions, because there are very gray lines between mental conditions, there are lots of gray lines between mental conditions we cannot, because it would be very hard to prove objectively that such condition exists. And we would expect, we will expect a lot of denial in our reimbursement claims from feel help. Please remember also that the biological strength of the Homo sapiens, we the people, is our ability to withstand stresses. Most of the mental conditions are due to stresses in the workplace, financial or, or, or uh, uh, psychological in nature. And uh, this is the very uh, 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 conditions that determines the strength of character of people. Our differences, our character that we have now is actually honed by the stresses that we underwent. Uh, just uh, perhaps we can make an example of the good Senator Manny Pacquiao. If he has not undergone, underwent all the stresses in his life, he will not be as good a boxer as he is now and a good senator as he is now. So uh, we have to exercise extreme caution in just mentioning mental illnesses without specifically mentioning the conditions and the exclusions as well as the evidence that we need to prove that there is mental condition. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairman. Maraming salamat, uh, Dr. Uh, Jaime. Uh, meron lang po akong gusto nang idagdag uh, itong tungkol sa uh, uh, bicycle lane. No? Anyway, with or without uh, epidemic, with or without pandemic, with or without uh, COVID-19, napaka-importante po ng health para sa atin, alusugan po ng bawat uh, Pilipino. Yun po ang unang consideration ko dito. And regarding naman po sa bicycle, uh, using of bicycle lane para sa ating mga commuters, uh, siguraduhin po natin sa MMDA, siguraduhin nyo po na safe po yung pagdadaanan nila, talagang secured yung bicycle lane na ibibigay ninyo. At siguraduhin nyo rin po na yung mga nagbabike ay physically fit na makapagbisikleta po. Huwag niyo pong pilitin at huwag niyong kalimutang magsuot po ng uh, face uh, mask. So, so unahin po natin ang kalusugan po ng bawat uh, mamamayang Pilipino. Anyway, uh, tukol naman po sa pagbubukas ng klase uh, as uh, committee chairman ng Committee uh, on Health dito sa Senado, we will uh, take this uh, one step at a time so that we can slowly but surely protect the safety of, of our students. Huwag po natin biglain. Let's assess first what happens in the next uh, coming days. No? Pag-aaralan muna natin dahil 
iba't ibang linggo, iba't ibang araw ay uh, meron pong posibleng mangyari. So, let's assess first what happens in the next coming days. Kahit ayaw nating maantala ang klase ng mga bata, importante po para sa akin yung safe po sila. Yan ang unang konsiderasyon natin ang kalusugan ng ating mga anak. For me, no vaccine, no physical classes na mangyayari. So, no vaccine, no physical classes, no uh, face-to-face uh, learning po pag walang uh, vaccine. Importante po ang kalusugan ng uh, bawat uh, Pilipino. Salamat po. If there are no more questions, we shall uh, take note the comments and recommendations uh, in our uh, report. With that, I thank our uh, resource uh, persons for their inputs and comments. We thank uh, Secretary uh, Duque uh, for his uh, presence po sa oras ninyo. Trabaho lang po tayo, sir. Marami uh, salamat uh, po. Malalampasan natin itong uh, ating uh, dinadaanan mo for help and uh, lahat po. Magtulungan tayo, magbayanihan tayo. All the concerns and uh, positions raised are well noted and will be considered in the drafting of the committee report. Again, let me re reiterate, uh, let us learn from this pandemic and work together to strengthen our health healthcare system and better provide quality healthcare to our people. Thank you and uh, good afternoon. Uh, this hearing is hereby uh, adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Congrats. Congrats, Sunny. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you Salamat po. Salamat po. Salamat po. Salamat po. Salamat po.